Gutsy call by Coach Tiller. The Boilermakers got to be walking on cloud nine right now. It's a century of football history, but only five bowl games. But this is a new Purdue. Coach Joe Tiller's arrival has signaled a turnaround. Start having a great life. It's about living with inspiration. Start having a great life. Cowboy doubters, it's time to believe. Caught! Touchdown! What Bob Simmons has done for this program is remarkable. Oklahoma State's recent glory seemed a distant memory, but thanks to Coach Bob Simmons, tonight the Cowboys make their first bowl appearance in nine years. Uh, he's having a great life. Uh, he's The most recognizable landmarks in Texas is the Alamo, and it's a landmark night for Purdue and Oklahoma State football. For the first time in the 90s, these two teams ready to play in a college football bowl game. Welcome to the Builder Square Alamo Bowl. Mike Tirico with Todd Blackwich, the quarterback of the Penn State National Champs back in 1983. So many of us who are college football fans would love to see a playoff, but let me give you playoff thinkers food for thought. If we had a playoff system, no matter how big, Purdue and Oklahoma State wouldn't be playing postseason. And you know what? These teams deserve the reward they're getting tonight. Yeah, they really do. I mean, you know, I think these two teams are symbolic of what happened in college football this season. There were several teams that had breakthrough campaigns. There were a couple big-name teams that didn't play as well, but the breakthrough teams, two of them are playing tonight. They both won eight bowl games. The bowl drought is over, not just for the players and coaches, but for some star fans and alumni. They deserve this just reward. All right, how'd they get here? For Purdue, they hired Joe Tiller, the Wyoming coach, Opened up the offense, thrown it all over. You need a quarterback to do that, and Billy Dick and the seniors done a great job. He has really emerged. He's fought through injuries. He's overcome. Not a bad first year in Joe Tiller's system. Over 2,800 yards and 19 touchdowns. Led the most prolific offense in the Big Ten. Did a real nice job spreading the ball around. Five different receivers, over 25 catches this season. But his greatest asset, his competitiveness. He doesn't have a huge arm. He doesn't have great speed, but he will fight you every single play. He will face an aggressive defense tonight, but maybe when you have a high-powered passing attack, the best defense is having a good offense yourself. And Oklahoma State has a good quarterback to lead there. Oh, his name's Tony Lindsay. Yeah, well, Oklahoma State likes to run the football, but they need to control the clock and control the ball. And to do that, they're going to need their red shirt freshman quarterback make some plays. Look to him to make plays, running the option, running play action and bootleg. He's a very agile guy. He's got terrific poise for a young guy. He's the son of a high school football coach, carries himself very well, and he has the foot speed and the inside out there that if things break down, he can turn it into a big play. Tony Lindsay needs to make plays for the Cowboys. Well, you're not going to win a bowl game just running the ball. When they put it in the air, they have a weapon on the business end of those passes. For more on him, the third man of our team, Dr. Jerry Putt. Thank you, Michael. Hello, everybody. You know, rarely in this age of specialization is the impact player for a team on offense and defense one of the same. However, in 1997, we've already seen that kind of player win a Heisman Trophy in Michigan's Charles Woodson. Well, tonight, Oklahoma State hopes that kind of player, junior wide receiver, defensive back, and kick returner R.W. McWhorters can win them a football game. On offense, McWhorters is electrifying. He can do it all. Whether running or catching the football, he makes things happen. In fact, don't be surprised if they challenge the Purdue secondary early with him to stretch him to gather momentum. On defense, the all-Big 12 cornerback has a history of being a little bit of a gambler. Now, that in combination with a little bit of fatigue associated with so many plays on offense and returning kicks has caused him to be beaten deep early in the year. Now, whether on top of his game, he is a weapon offensively. But too many plays to cause him to be a weakness on defense. Either way, that marathon man right there should be fun to watch. Mike? Well, he's got about 30,000 Oklahoma State fans here with him. They've waited nine years. The Purdue fans have waited 13 for a bowl game. They only have to wait one more minute for the Builder Square Alamo Bowl. A crowd of about 55,000 expected here at the Alamo Dome for Purdue and Oklahoma State. Their fans have been filling the Riverwalk all week, and they are excited. 
Joe Taylor has brought the excitement back to Purdue football at age 55. The former coach at Wyoming is coaching his second bowl game. He took the Cowboys of Wyoming to the 93 Copper Bowl. The Cowboys of Oklahoma State are led by Bob Simmons, age 49. Of course, the man who was passed up for the Colorado job, a longtime assistant with the Buffs, has really brought success back to football in Stillwater. We talked about the drought for these teams. This is Purdue's first bowl game since 1984. Oklahoma State's first since 1988. Although infrequent visitors, they are successful postseason teams. Ironically, Oklahoma State's last bowl game was the 1988 Holiday Bowl when they beat a Wyoming team. Joe Tiller was the offensive coordinator on that football team. Not a good memory for Joe Tiller the last time in a bowl game he faced Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State winning the toss, deferring to the second half. Russ Sweatman set to kick off. Oklahoma State in orange, Purdue in white. The Alamo Bowl is underway. Immediately mishandled. Chris Popton finds the real estate and gets down to the 26-yard line. Now, the Napa starting lineup. For Purdue on offense, we talked about the quarterback, Ditkin. Ditkin, they play a one-back with Ed Watson, fourth all-time leading rusher for Purdue. Wide receiver number 80, Brian Alfred. Watch him. Team co-MVP, the school's all-time leading receiver. The offensive line, the same five starters every game this year. Mark Fisher, the best of the bunch, at left tackle. Five receivers, no backs for Alfred and the Boilermaker. The drive starts at their own 27. Dickens has handled the snap. Incomplete pass intended for Donald Winston, the sophomore. Here's how Oklahoma State will line up defensively. Four defensive linemen and Jamal Williams, the defensive coordinator, says he may be the best defensive tackle you see all of bowl week. Kenyatta Wright, watch him in the linebacking core, quarterback of this defense, and the number two tackler for Oakie State. Kevin Williams, we talked about McCorder's one corner. Well, Kevin Williams is also an all-Big 12 cornerback, 10th in the nation with six INT. Receivers again for second and ten. You see one or no backs all night for Purdue. Quarterback draw for Dickett. He'll get about nine yards to be close to the first down. Terrell Nalls up from his linebacker spot to make the stop. Really nice job by Billy Dickin reading this defense. Oklahoma State is showing pressure. They want to keep people around the line of scrimmage, but watch as Dickin comes back. Watch the linebackers drop out of there. He sees the linebackers drop out. He follows right up in there behind Brian nicely and picks up a nice game. Oklahoma State tried to show pressure and drop out, and Billy Dickin made him pay for it. Close enough to the first down for the senior, 50-year senior, that they will measure. Southeastern Conference officials assigned to this bowl game, Bill Goss leading this SEC crew. And it's third and a couple of links for the Boilermakers. Now, Todd, we talk about passing, Purdue, passing, passing. Can they run the ball, and how effective? Well, they run the ball very well. I mean, you would expect them to, to not run the ball very well, but they averaged over 178 yards per game running the football, actually finished ahead of Ohio State in terms of Big Ten rushing. Surprised a lot of people, but they were the fifth best running team in that conference. It will be a predominantly Oklahoma State house. That's why you hear all the noise as Purdue tries to do what it did so often this year. Get a first down on third down. They're going to be close. As Oklahoma State's aggressive defense hit Ed Watson. One of the drawbacks of this kind of offensive set and style with only one back is short yardage plays are a little bit tough because you don't have a lead blocker. You don't have a fullback in there to pave the way, but Edwin Watson, a very physical, tough runner, was able to still pick up that first down on his own. So despite the Oklahoma State excitement, Joe Tiller's offense has it first and ten. Minute gone by, first quarter of the Builder Square Alamo Bowl. Four receivers. The screen for Watson. Just about a yard to the 39. R.W. McQuarters, the two-way player, was one of the guys with pressure Kenyatta Wright in on the tackle. This is what Joe Tiller's offense has 
really injected the excitement to the Purdue and West Lafayette campus, a school record for 363 points. Yeah, and teams, particularly teams they played early, were really confused going against this offense because they had no idea what to expect from Joe Tiller's system. Even if they studied Wyoming film, it still is much different when you get on the field. And Billy Dickens just did a nice job all season of picking up this offense and making it work. Pick up of one, second and nine. And off to Watson. Well read by Kenyatta Wright. That's why we told you to watch him. He's the second leading tackler on this team. The sophomore out of Oklahoma makes it third and long. Kenyatta Wright is one of the real fiery leaders of this defense. He is the guy that makes all the calls. Here he is lined up with his hand on the ground. Watch him pursue this play from the bottom of the screen. He's lined up in an unusual position and just crashes down, uses his speed to make the nice play behind the line of scrimmage. But Kenyatta Wright is, is up for the challenge of this ballgame. He knows he's got a lot on his shoulders calling all the defenses against multiple formations. Made a nice play there. First down awaits just past the 47-yard line. Oklahoma State brings fourth. First down with cross midfield to Alfred. The leading receiver all time at Purdue as the Boilermakers over midfield to pick up a 14. Good pass protection, Mike. You mentioned that offensive line has been intact for all 11 games. They do a nice job giving Dickin a good throwing lane. He takes a little bit of a hit, but well after the ball is thrown. And here's Alfred working one-on-one -on -one against Evan Howe, number 28. He's a young corner, and they got him isolated against the best wide receiver. That's a good matchup for Purdue. There you see those body school totals that he added to this year with 59 catches and nine touchdowns. Quick hitter with Watson. Picks up four or five. It'll be second and about five. When we talked to Rob Ryan yesterday, the defensive coordinator of Oklahoma State, he made it very clear to us that their number one priority was to get to the quarterback and hit Billy Dickin. They had to get to him and knock him down. They couldn't let him sit back there and pick them apart because all those wide receivers tough to cover all over the field. They're going to keep enough people around the line of scrimmage that hopefully they can get in and disrupt Billy Dickin's timing. Yes, Rob Ryan is Buddy Ryan's son. Twins, his other brother Rex, now the uh, defensive coordinator at Oklahoma. Watson for four. It will be third and one. There's going to be some good matchups with Brian Alford against whoever lines up against him. This time he's on the left side against R.W. McQuarters. And McQuarters wants to just establish himself physically, I think, right away against Brian Alford. Alford is a very physical wide receiver, and you can see, not intimidated at all by the physical play there by R.W. McCorder. 6'2 and 188, the size of Alford. Opening drive, it's ninth play, is third, and a yard. Dickin down the line. Trying to lean forward and get it, but Jack Golden, the junior linebacker, had him tied up. We'll wait for the spot, but I think he's a half step short. He is. It's fourth down. Nice effort by Dickin, though. That looked like he was going to be tackled well behind the line of scrimmage, but good second effort and strength got him close to the stick, but still short of the first down. Purdue uses two punters. Danny Rogers is the boost punter, the short kicker. R.W. McWhorter back deep to receive. A huge factor on special teams. All three bases in the game. Rodgers has been good about putting the opponents inside the 20. And has done it again. Oh, they got too cute. Oh, they got too cute, Mike. They had it perfect. And they tried to squeeze two extra yards out of it. And ended up getting, uh, getting bit by it. As our friend Mr. Corso would say, not so fast, my friend. They had it surrounded. It got out. Oklahoma stayed on offense when we come back. The Builder Square Alamo Bowl is presented by Builder Square, Heckinger, and Home Quarters, and in part by Janice No Load Mutual Funds. Oklahoma State to start its drive at its own 20 after a five minute 13 second drive by Purdue to try to pin Oklahoma State back there close but couldn't do it there is R.W. McQuarters first snap he will be on offense look for him to go deep right away to him and try to loosen up the Purdue defense 
Sean Love is the receiver in motion. The handoff from Tony Lindsay on first down to Nathan Simmons. No gain as Greg Smith was in there. Let's check the starting lineup for Oklahoma State. Nathan Simmons is the coach's son, but he's a darn good player, too. Second on this team in rushing. We'll see a lot of Jamal Fobbs, number two. Garrett Steggs, because of the injury to the first-team All-American Derek Mays, the tight end spot will be key for Oklahoma State tonight. And up to Steggs. Josh Henson making his 39th career start. Second-team All-Big 12, the left guard. Maybe the best player on that OSU offensive front. No game. Second and ten. That's Steggs in motion. The fullback, Brian Aiken. 15. First down yard for Aiken. But a flag is down. Adrian Beasley to stop. Yeah, I think this one's going to come back. There was some movement along the line of scrimmage by Oklahoma State. A lot of shuffling of formation and then motion. And uh, now we got Oklahoma State guys pointing the other way. More concern for Joe Taylor, the man who made the stop, Adrian Beasley, is shaken up. Looks like he got a stinger in his shoulder. He was. That's a big guy. He was trying to hit Brian Aikens, 245 pounds, particularly when a guy like that's running north and south and has a full head of steam like he did. While we have this second, and they check to Aikens, or rather to Beasley, here's the Purdue defense. Roosevelt Colvin, 10 sacks. He's the leader up front of their defensive front four. Second team all Big Ten. Willie Fells, the linebacker, missed last year because of academics. He's come back in the classroom and on the football field. The team's top tackler. Lee Brush is the quarterback of the secondary. Has great football knowledge. Says football game went 60 minutes. I'd love to be on the field all 60 minutes. He loves to play. The free safety Beasley being helped off. Fortunately for Purdue, Billy Gustin, the backup free safety, is back and healthy. He was the starter early in the season, broke his clavicle in the opener against Toledo. He's been playing the last couple games, but he is at least full speed, so they've got a good backup there. OSU, first and 10 from their own 35. Lindsay's first throw to McWhorters. R.W. McWhorters picks up nine yards, and you see the electricity he brings when he's in the lineup on offense. Well, they've got to get the football in his hands. He's been in all 14 plays of the ball game so far. They're giving him a lot of room. That's Lamar Kennard. Gives him a lot of room. And then watch, he makes that first guy miss. He's got great feet, and he's even quicker on this AstroTurf. Again, the isolation, the quick throw. Get it in his hands quick. Let him do something with the football in the open field. And he gains nine yards. And finally, now, we'll watch a snap from the sideline. He checks out Willie Grissom. The X receiver is in with Sean Love. Second and one. Lindsay option, first down and more. Across midfield, pulled down by Mike Rose at the Purdue 45. See, Tony Lindsay is kind of the X factor for Oklahoma State and his ability to run the football. In the Big Ten, there's not that many quarterbacks that are a threat running the football, running the option. This time, he follows his fullback, Brian Akins, gets a nice block by the fullback and turns it upfield. But he is really kind of a wild card. This is a different style of offense that Purdue is used to seeing in the Big Ten. Akins made a nice block on Lee Johnson, who got the start. One of the linebacker spots. McWhorter's back in the game. First and ten, Cowboy. Lindsay up top. With a tight end, Greg Brown. Across the 25, first down. Pickup of 23. The senior had just six catches this year. See, one of the effects of having R.W. McWhorters on the field offensively is even if he's not your number one option, he's going to attract a lot of attention. R.W. McWhorters is out at the top of the left of the screen, and a lot of attention went there and left the tight end wide open down the seam, and a good throw by Lindsey. Here's McWhorters out on the outside. He's a secondary receiver, but he attracts enough attention to open it up for his tight end. After the longest catch of Greg Brown's career, first and 10, OSU. And here's Jamal Fox. Across the 20, Lee Brush and Mike Rose pull him down at the 19. Two tailbacks, very productive. And similar number of attempts. Nathan Simmons carried 166 times. Jamal Fox, the freshman, 161 times. 
Simmons is kind of the, the guy who runs a little bit thicker, a little bit harder. Fobbs more the make-you-miss guy, but both of them, as you said, very effective and a nice complement to one another. Fobbs is the lone back for second and seven. Games just a couple. Brent Fox, the redshirt freshman out of Cincinnati's LaSalle High School, read that play well. See, this kind of play coming up right now, even though Greg Brown made a nice catch from the tight end position, this is the kind of situation where Oklahoma State really misses Alonzo Mays because they're in a situation right now where it's third and five. He was a big target at six foot six. And 29 catches, the leading receiver on this team. They really miss him in this part of the field. Let's see where Tony Lindsay goes with the football here. First down away at the 12. For the tight end. Oh, and just behind Garrett Steggs in the end zone. It will be fourth down. Well, he had what he wanted with his tight end Garrett Steggs, but as you mentioned, a little behind him, and that's that's a throw Tony Lindsay needs to get out in front of his tight end. That's a big target, running away from the football. Got to keep that out in front of him. Good pressure by Roosevelt Colvin. Maybe forces him to throw a little bit earlier, but he certainly makes him pay for it after the throw. Watch the throw. Should be out in front with a tight end can run through to the football. A little bit behind the receiver. Top sophomore Tim Sidness to try a 34-yard field goal. Hasn't missed inside 40 this year. And puts Oklahoma State on the board. Purdue had Oklahoma State bottled up inside its own five, but the special teams didn't make the play. Oklahoma State a field goal drive, and they lead by three. Tim Sidness, the 34-yard field goal, the first points of the Builders Square Alamo Bowl for 1997. Oklahoma State, a nice drive down the field to put up its three points, a drive that started at its own 20. Nine plays and 63 yards, and that key 23-yard pass to the tight end. Brown gets them in field goal range. Russ Sweatman to kick off again. Chris Popton waiting for the Boilermaker. From the four. Popton, who averaged 21 per return, had about 26 there. Trey Thomas pulls it down at the 30. Let's go back to the missed opportunity on third down for Oklahoma State. A good call by Les Miles. Watch. As the, as the fullback Aikens goes out, two guys go with him, and only one guy, Fells, is going to trail the tight end to the corner. They got exactly what they wanted, a clear out for the tight end, just over the wrong shoulder on the throw by Tony Lindsay. An early mistake for Oklahoma State. There is Alonzo Mays, the tight end, talking to Steggs about that play. Mays, by far, the leading pass receiver for this team this year. First down, Purdue keeps it on the ground in just a couple of yards. For Ed Watson. Ed Watson on the carry, tackled by Juliano Wright. Purdue's offense able to move the ball, Todd. Not bad in their opening drive. They were concerned about, how about the tempo of all this quick throwing and quick passing when you don't play a football game for more than a month? Yeah, they did a pretty good job in their first drive, even though they didn't get any points out of it, and they were able to establish their run a little bit just to keep this Oklahoma State defense honest. Even though they lined up with a lot of formations, what didn't look like running formations, they got some runs out of it. Digging to John Blackman, lots of room for the tight end. All the way to the 38-yard line. Pickup for the senior out of Yorkville, Illinois. Nice quick read again by Billy Dickin. This is just a little combination route. The outside receiver is going to run the slant in, and it's the quick arrow route against pressure. Nobody picked up the tight end, John Blackman. They tried to blitz the quarterback, but nobody picked up the tight end, John Blackman. You see Brian Alford, he's running the slant. No one goes out with the tight end. Good play by Purdue. Dickens three of four passing. He'll put it in the air again. Incomplete pressure was coming in his face from Jamal Williams. That's the guy we told you is the great defensive tackle. Yeah, Rob Ryan, his dad, Buddy Ryan, says this is his favorite player. Says he's kind of a poor man's Jerome Brown, but they do not feel that he can be blocked by anybody one-on-one -on, -one on this Purdue offensive line. Take a look at him over the center, number 99. 
quick pursuit and a beeline right to the quarterback forces Dickens to throw that too early and therefore the bad throw. Second and ten. Watson the lone back. This is a 46 nickel defense. They've not shown this yet. This is a new look for Oklahoma State. And Brian nicely, the left guard, as the clock was running down, got a little anxious, and I think the senior was the man the flag was thrown off. Billy Dickin was trying to change the play. He read it was a new defense, tried to audible to an option. Dead ball, false start, on the offensive line, five-yard penalty. You mentioned Rob Ryan. There is the co-defensive coordinator for Oklahoma State. Is this a pure 46 defense like fans saw with the Super Bowl shuffle Bears and then the Eagles after that? Not completely. I mean, they'll line up in the pure 46 every now and then, but against a defense like or an offense like this with the multiple formations and multiple wide receivers, they've got to spread it out a little bit, but they still try to defend the run first. That's the heart and soul of the defense. Second and 15 for Dickens. Four receivers. was hit early but no Evan Howell's hit was legal says the officials it will be third and long. Rob Ryan really likes this young corner Evan Howell as you take a look at the numbers of the Oklahoma State defense great improvement in all three categories really from last season to this season biggest change in, in total yards a hundred less yards per game by the Oklahoma State defense. And Bob Simmons told us, quite frankly, in his first two years, the reason that they didn't win football games was their inability to play defense. And he knew he had to change drastically the style of defense this year if he hoped to win. Rob Ryan came in from Hutchinson Junior College in Kansas. Third and 15. Dick and throwing. Got the first down. Isaac Jones out of bounds at the 22 yard line. He got a couple steps on R.W. McWhorters. That was the matchup. McWhorters got behind him in a perfect throw by Billy Dickin on the crossing route. Pickup of 21. Take a look now. Isaac Jones in the slot. And he just turns R.W. McWhorters right around. And again, the perfect throw by Billy Dickin to the sideline. Good protection and stands in there, and that's right where you want to throw it. Let him catch it on the move and turn up field. Four receivers. Oklahoma State defense is jumping up and down for that flag. I think they may have gotten it on Dan Malley. Dead ball foul. Ball start on the offensive line. First down. Five yard penalty. We got the right tackle to move. Joe Tiller's team penalized for the second time on this drive. National Car Rental Bowl Week continues tomorrow with the AXA Equitable Liberty Bowl. But Pitt Panthers out of the Big East against 22nd ranked Southern Miss. Eric Booth, their great return specialist, led the nation 34 yards per kick return. Tomorrow afternoon, as you get set for your New Year's Eve party, the AXA Equity Liberty Bowl on ESPN. Kicking on first and long. Back to Isaac Jones. Spins away from the tackle. To the 15-yard line. Check that Willie Tillman, the senior, number five. Not Jones, number six on the catch. Just the eighth catch this year for Willie Tillman. Oklahoma State doesn't feel that Jamal Williams can be blocked by one guy, but here Purdue does a pretty nice job. They send two guys his way. And they take care of Jamal Williams on that play. And again, they spread you out vertically and horizontally. This is just a little outlet throw to Willie Tillman. Nice game for Billy Dickens. Had a nice drive also. Second and two. Dickens looking ends up for Alfred. Intercepted. Kevin Williams, who picked off six this year, comes up with the INT. Bonnie was throwing for Alfred, but maybe it was Tillman, the receiver, who was farther out to the left. Yeah, it was kind of a tweener. It actually was going in a direction between the two receivers, and Kevin Williams, who was defending on the outside, peeled off to make the interception. A nice job by Kevin Williams. Off the interception, Oklahoma State ball. They lead by three. But didn't break, but they made a lot of big plays turning the ball over. Rocks back to Justin, helping Purdue get the ball back. Great field position at the OSU 28. Dickens beats the big blitz. Takes Ed Watson 
who has the first down. 11-yard pickup. Nick can get picked up by Maurice Simpson. See, they caught Jack Gold in number 51 in a little bit of a bind. He wasn't sure what he was doing. Jack Golden is a linebacker. He's a great athlete, but he's a converted tight end. He's still kind of feeling his way through. Watch Golden right here. As he comes on the rush, he realizes, uh-oh, I've got coverage on the fullback. I better turn around and get him. And Dickon reads it right away and gets the football to Ed Watson. They caught Jack Golden in a little in-between situation there. And it was a good read by Dickon. Watson is split to the near side as a wide receiver. No back for Dickon. Got away from one man, but not the next. Lost three on the sack. The initial pressure coming from Kenyatta, right? Tabor LeBlanc, one of the players who's tied him up. So if Purdue lines up in a formation like this with so many wide receivers, the bottom line is they only have a certain number of blockers. Most of the time, only five. And if you bring one more rusher, you can't account for everybody. And that time the rush got to Dickens and was able to knock him down for the sack. That's a number we'll be charting all night. Oklahoma State wants the pressure. Purdue wants the pass. He's the quarterback. He's 6'1", 207. He's going to get some licks. Dickens. Alfred, touchdown! exact same combination route that they hit the tight end in for the big play earlier in the ball game. It's the slant right by Alford. It's the arrow route by the tight end, and it was a great quick throw by Billy Dickin right on the mark against the best cover guy, Kevin Williams, for the touchdown. Shane Ryan on. Adds the extra point. Purdue takes the lead. The turnover cost them seven. This is the combination route that, that Dan Marino has made a living against. The, the quick slant by the outside man, the arrow by the tight end, and watch the quick flick of the wrist against pressure right where Brian Alford could catch it and take it into the end zone. That's a, that's a great throw against pressure by Billy Dickin. And Joe Tiller, who's really the man who's inserted this passing offense at Purdue, did it so successfully at Wyoming, where Marcus Harris was a great receiver. Brian Alford's been the guy with the big number of catches this year and catches the touchdown here. That's Tim Lopano, the wide receiver coach. And well, what a great year Brian Alford has had. I mean, he was a guy that didn't even know if he was going to have a season in 1997. He was academically ineligible at the end of last fall and he had to check himself into a junior college out in Coffeyville, Kansas to get himself eligible to kind of readjust and get right again and wanted to play football again. He's had a great senior season. Really has been a, one of the outstanding leaders on this Purdue football team. He got himself eligible, not taking easy classes, management, statistics, accounting, business law. He got three A's and two B's. Try to keep it away from the quarters, and they do with Kevin Williams. Across the 25 to the 28. Well, Purdue and Oklahoma State, in addition to not being in a bowl since the 90s, have other similarities. Yeah, they really do. First of all, there was a, a real preseason pruning by both Bob Simmons and Joe Tiller. You can see a lot of players started this season not as members of the team. They also both had favorable schedules. When you take a look at what they are, they also had quarterbacks that emerged. Billy Dickin was not known to be the starter when the season started. Tony Lindsay didn't start for the fourth game. Both of them ended up having great seasons, a big part of their team's success. More of that comparison in a minute, but now Lindsay, the freshman who made a mistake, let's see how he reacts on first down to Nathan Simmons. Turns the corner and gets across the 35, a pickup of seven yards. Third similarity of these teams, they both had very favorable schedules. They both finished 8-3, but Purdue didn't have to play Michigan or Ohio State. Oklahoma State didn't play Nebraska or Kansas State. They beat some teams that were down a little bit, and they both had some early success. And then turnover margin, both teams finished a plus 13. They were very opportunistic on defense. They turned turnovers into points. These teams, very, very similar. They also both stayed relatively injury-free throughout the entire season. And their head 
coaches. Tiller in his first year at Purdue. Simmons his third year at Oklahoma State. Have become the most popular men in their towns other than the basketball quarter coaches. The quarterback is sacked by the Purdue defense as Lindsey was trying to escape. Once again, it was Brent Botts, the reserve Lindsay defensive tackle, who's been playing well in this first quarter. Botts came on as the season went on. The redshirt freshman had four sacks this year. That'll be a loss of a yard, so it will be third down when our second quarter kicks off in a couple of minutes. Joe Tiller's team fell behind, made a special team's mistake, able to bail itself out. Gets a touchdown pass from Alfred to, well, to Alfred from Billy Dickens. After one, Purdue seven, OSU three. Quarter of the Builder Square Alamo Bowl, 1997, Purdue by four. Mike Tirico, Todd Blackledge, Dr. Jerry Punch with you from San Antonio. He third down to start this quarter, third and four for OSU. Lindsay, the quarterback, keeping. It depends on the spot. His knee went down, but where the football was, I think he may have picked it up. You know, I, this Tony Lindsay is amazing to me. When I watch them on film, the thing that just jumps out of the film is his incredible poise. And then you say, this guy can't be a freshman, but he really is. And I think what it's attributed to is just great upbringing by his dad. His dad, Hugh, was his high school football coach at Thomas Jefferson High School in Denver. And he just thinks like a coach out there. He doesn't try to force things. He's always thinking one play ahead. And he really makes good decisions for a young quarterback. First and 10 for Lindsey and the Cowboys. The big pack Aiken. Greg Smith started the defensive push. Willie Fells, the middle linebacker, cleaned it up. The numbers after the opening quarter will show a decisive advantage for Purdue in the passing yards and the total yards. The turnover for OSU cost them seven points. A big interception and a big return by Adrian Beasley set up that touchdown for Purdue. But Billy Dickin off to a very good start in this ball game. As you see, 7 of 11, 108 yards. They have not been able to disrupt his timing too much yet. The freshman Tony Lindsay facing second and eight from the 40. Early movement. Was it the OSU offense or the Purdue defense? Well, it was the Purdue defense, and what happened was the center, Jeremy Ophit, as soon as he felt the movement across the line of scrimmage, he snapped the football. That's why there was no play run. That was just the center saying, hey, let's get an easy five yards right now. Five yards, defense, five yards. See, as soon as Perez comes off the line of scrimmage, Ophit, the center, snapped the football, and Tony Lindsay better need... He better learn to take a knee in that situation, though, because somebody's going to come in and take a pop on him, even though the play was dead. Ophit starting his 20th consecutive game. Shows some of that experience there. OSU not penalized yet tonight. Yeah, that, that's a smart move because now you turn a second and nine situation into a very makeable second and four. Two receivers, two backs. Lindsay tied up. Not much there. Fells with the pursuit again defensively. Chucky Wakori also in on the tackle. There's Wakori, 49, the junior from Lafayette, Indiana. Willie Fell, the leading tackler on this football team, 127 tackles on the season, had a career-high 20 against Iowa. Watch him read it quickly and pursue down the line of scrimmage and then slip right in and get involved in the tackle. That's just good pursuit by the inside linebacker, Willie Fell. on the play clock. They're down to three. Lindsay gets it off. Pressured. Hit as he throws. Nearly intercepted. Mike Hawthorne went up for it against Sean Love. It falls incomplete. And it's fourth down. Tony Lindsay very fortunate on that particular situation because he was throwing that route as if he anticipated man coverage. But Mike Hawthorne was just sitting in there watching the quarterback the whole way. Watch Fells come on the blitz. He's going to force the early throw by Lindsey. And he is very fortunate against zone defense that this one wasn't picked off. Nice job by Sean Love turning from receiver into defensive back and knocking that ball down. First punt for senior Jason Davis, who has a big leg. Exciting freshman Vinny Sutherland back deep to receive for Purdue. From the 
14. Settled and lost the ball. But Purdue able to get it back. Aaron Button able to fall on it. Terrence Gaines was the man who knocked it free. Near disaster for Purdue, but they get it back. Leading OSU by four. Builder Square Alamo Bowl is presented by Builder Square, Heckinger, and Home Quarters. The beautiful river walk, the centerpiece of this exciting city, downtown San Antonio for the holidays, where the fans from Purdue and Oklahoma State, how they really show that they haven't been to a bowl in a while. They were allowed a little rowdy last night on the river walk. Well, and the river walk's a perfect place for, for bowl crowds because you got one side of the river was Oklahoma State, <laughs> one side was Purdue. They're chanting back and forth each other. It's a great scene. And nobody went into the river. <laughs> Ed Watson stopped, lost maybe a yard. Part of the strategy against Billy Dickin tonight for Oklahoma State, try to hit him, get him out of his rhythm, make him look out of that ear hole a couple times. They were able to knock him down on the ground, but they've not gotten him out of his rhythm. Watch him stay right in the in the heat of pressure and make the nice throw to Alfred for the touchdown. They've hit him. They've knocked him down a couple times, but they've not disrupted his timing or his rhythm to this point. The numbers for the tough competitor, the 50-year senior, he doesn't have a big arm. You're not going to see him throw it 50 yards, but they can move it down the field. And on the ground, too, with Ed Watson. First down across the 22 to the 24-yard line. Down to the sidelines, Dr. Jerry Punch. Guys, last night, Purdue first-year head coach Joe Tiller checked his football team out of the posh hotel in downtown San Antonio near the beautiful Riverwalk. Said he wanted to get away from the fans, the festivities, and all the distractions. He took him about 30 minutes north of San Antonio where he said there was nothing but prairie dogs and privacy. That's up where we were staying. And I'll assure you, there are no distractions. He said he wanted to be able to get his team focused. He wanted to get their game face on, so he moved him a half an hour out of town. Well, that's why we were out there, too. We wanted to make sure we were away from the distractions and had our game faces on early in the week. It's been a month. Make sure you guys are focused. Here is Dickie. First down. Across midfield, he's not supposed to be the running quarterback. 26 yards. Well, we talked to Joe Tiller yesterday about Billy Dixon. He said, you know, I'm not going to come out and say he's really a mobile quarterback, but he's just mobile enough to be dangerous and to be effective. And this time on the quarterback draw, he really makes the Oklahoma State defense pay. You can see nothing in the middle, no linebackers in the middle of the field. So once Dickon reads it and gets past the initial line, he's got a lot of green field ahead of him and he turns in a nice run. Offensive coordinators for Purdue talk about the best thing he does is compete. Game in, game out. From around midfield. Another first down to Alford. Working on Kevin Williams, a 12-yard pickup. Kevin Williams is the best cover guy for Oklahoma State, but he's been beaten for a touchdown. He's got an interception, but he's also been beaten here. He's given a lot of cushion to Brian Alford. He can't quite get out of his back pedal quick enough to come up and make a play on the ball and an easy completion for Brian Alford. We put R.W. McQuarters, the other first-team All-Big Ten quarterback, or cornerback, out there in the same class as Charles Woodson. So why doesn't McQuarters go all over the field with Alford? Well, that just would destroy the integrity of Rob Ryan's defense. He likes to keep his corners on one side of the field. Pass deflected and incomplete on first down. Good pressure by the Oklahoma State front line. Terrell Knowles was the man who broke it up. You know, just to finish that point also, if you didn't think that Kevin Williams was as good of a corner and cover guy as R.W. McQuarters. Maybe you think about flopping him, but he is just as confident that Kevin Williams is every bit as good of a cover corner, maybe even better because he focuses a little better. He's an older, more mature guy, so he feels very comfortable. Whichever side Alford goes to, he's got a good guy to cover it. And the defensive coordinator, Ron Bryan, told us that if you listed the top 10 hits for OSU defense this year, Williams made eight of them. Second and ten for Dickens. It was Knowles again. He had two and a half sacks this year. The sophomore went to a great basketball high school. Simon Gratz in Philadelphia. So this is a pretty good football player. This is great coverage downfield. Oklahoma State just coming with a four-man rush. But Billy Dickens nowhere to go with the football. And a nice stick at the end of the play by Terrell Knowles. Now, this time Alfred's on the left side of the formation, and McWhorter's right on top of him. Good coverage in the open field by R.W. McWhorter. A loss of 
three. It's third and 13. That was the kind of hit that Rob Ryan wants on this quarterback. That was a good stick by Terrell Null. OSU defensive confusion, and they take a timeout. Timeout's called by Purdue. OSU got a break there. We'll be right back. 18,000 students on the campus of Oklahoma State University in Stillwater. School founded on Christmas Day, 1890. The Boilermakers, some of the 35,000 enrolled in West Lafayette have made the journey down south. Third and 13 for the Purdue offense. Dick it in trouble. Just put one up there and out there. And a flag for intentional grounding. Or roughing the passer. Yeah, this one, uh, I think it's going to go against Oklahoma State, although it's a, it's a very close call. Bill Goss, Southeastern Conference official, leading this officiating crew. Intentional grounding in the offense. Only five yards in the spot and lost it down. It'll be fourth down. He did have a receiver out there to the yeah. left, but it was about 10 or 12 yards away from where the ball ended up. Yeah, I'm not sure about that one. There was a receiver running down the left side of the field, and, and yes, it's obvious he was getting rid of the football to avoid the sack, but there's a couple white shirts around. Yeah, that, and his receiver stopped. Maybe he misread the, the route. I don't know that you can call that one intentional grounding there. Danny Rogers, his hunting distance isn't important. He's the short pooch punter. Try to pin him inside the 20 with good hang time. R.W. McQuarters, the explosive returner, is back to receive. Nice kick by Rogers. This one goes into the end zone on a touchback, but a flag is down near where the ball was kicked. I think it's only going to be a five-yard running into the kicker. This was not a roughing penalty. It probably will still force a fourth down punting situation for Purdue, but still a, an unnecessary penalty for Oklahoma State. Clint Metcalf was the man who made the contact with Rodgers. This defensive series, that last defensive series, was very much a winning series for Oklahoma State because not only did they stop Purdue's offense and make them go backwards, they put Running a couple licks the on Billy Dick. The defense, the penalty is five yards. Repeat fourth down. They tried to come after the punt here and just, you got to know the angle to take across the foot of the punter, not directly at him. And you could see at the end of the play, as the punter was coming back down, Clint Metcalf just rolled right up into his leg. He was engaged by John Blackman, the reserve tight end. So now McQuarters is back deep with five more yards. We'll see if Danny Rogers can pin him inside the 20 again. For Vinny Sutherland, who is five foot ten, it's another touchback. OSU ball, the twenty. Michigan, Washington State, the national championship on the line in the middle of the New Year's Bash Thursday on ABC Sports. Michigan has the number one defense in the nation. Washington State behind only Nebraska on offense. We've been talking so much about R. W. McQuarters and making the comparisons to the Heisman Trophy winner Charles Woodson. You know, there's been some speculation that Charles Woodson may not play much on offense in the Rose Bowl, particularly because that passing offense is really going to tax this Michigan defense, particularly the cornerback. They've got five wide receivers that Ryan Lee's very comfortable throwing the football to, so Charles Woodson and the rest of that defense will really be challenged in a different way by this Cougar offense. Sixers Bowl before, Sugar Bowl after on ABC, and Todd and John Saunders will be in the studio keeping an eye on the games all day. Nathan Simmons is stopped for no gain. It will be second down. Simmons on the carry hit by McCoy. Well, this Purdue defense that Tony Lindsay is facing tonight, if you take the four units, offense and defense of each team, Purdue's defense would be the fourth of right. those four units. But as you said, they are opportunistic. Does that make you a better defense when you make big plays during the year? Do you gain somewhat false confidence but still have it on the field? Well, I don't think it's a false confidence. If that's something that you know is a part of what you do well and you've made a living on it like Purdue has, has done, they forced 31 turnovers during the season, you don't mind giving up a lot of yards as long as you keep people out of the end zone. Lindsay to throw to the tight end stakes. First down. 
to the 34-yard line. Willie Fells in on the stop. That's the man who broke open for the near touchdown in the opening quarter, Stegg. Again, you run the ball with some effectiveness. It sets up your bootleg. You can see Willie Fells, the linebacker, really fooled by the play-action fake, and that enabled Lindsey to make the throw. Watch Fells go with the run fake, and then by the time he recovers, it's too late. Easy completion for the Cowboys. Play-action can suck you in a little more when you're a predominant run team. Yeah, and when you're a sophomore linebacker. <laughs> First and 10. Here is Nathan Simmons bouncing it to the outside. But not much there. Adrian Beasley, who had the interception earlier, along with Lee Johnson on the stop. Purdue is trying to get their safeties up around the line of scrimmage, both Beasley and Lee Brush. And it may be time for Oklahoma State and Tony Lindsay to try to, to throw the ball downfield a little bit, try to get R.W. McQuarters involved running down the field, something to stretch the defense and pull those safeties away from the running game a little bit. That a sloppy huddle, to say the least. Yeah, there's a lot of confusion right now. They, they may need to take a time out here. And in fact, they do. Personnel coming in and out. OSU takes a timeout. We'll step aside for a moment. Halfway through second quarter. I Oklahoma State fans, but the Purdue fans have been as loud as possible here tonight in the 1997 Builder Square Alamo Bowl, a four-point lead for the Boilermakers out of the Big Ten against the OSU team that finished second in the Big 12 South this year. Second and 11 for freshman quarterback Tony Lindsay. Pressure coming, picked it up, first down, Sean Love. The junior out of Oklahoma City beat Lee Brush for a 16-yard pickup. This is an all-out blitz. They brought a lot of pressure on Tony Lindsay, but a nice job by the interior of the Oklahoma State offensive line. They gave Lindsay enough time to make the nice throw, and Sean Love, watch him catch the football with his hands. This is a mismatch, a wide receiver against Lee Brush, the strong safety, but a real nice job by Sean Love going up, catching that ball with his hands, not letting it get to his body. The leading pass catches for wide receivers had 12 and 14 catches, so throws to the wideout. Not a big part of this offense. Just a couple of yards on the first down run. For Jamal Bobs, the freshman out of New Orleans. Bobs and Simmons rotate at tailback, and we thought it was interesting. Who makes the decision on the rotation? Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's got to be Bob Simmons that makes the decision. <laughs> and. You know, that's, of course, the, the father of Nathan Simmons. And we were talking about, boy, I'll tell you what, Jamal Fobbs must, he has to have a lot of self-confidence. <laughs> if he knows the guy he's competing against and sharing time with, his dad's the head coach. He's got to have pretty high self-esteem. And Jamal Fobbs had a great year. And their number of snaps is about the same. Here is Fobbs. Sneaks away and gets about a yard or so. His Purdue defense is pursuing to the ball quite nicely. Chris Zerba, the junior. Yeah, they are really, they're really doing a nice job running to the football. As you see Jamal Fobbs a little bit dinged up after that run. And, you know, Purdue is not an overly big defense. They made a lot of changes of personnel this year to get more speed on the defensive side of the football. They moved some defensive backs up to linebackers. They moved some offensive players over to defense. So they're not a real big unit, but they do have better speed than they've had the last couple years, and they've done a nice job running to the football tonight. So Brock Spack in the Boilermaker defense kept OSU's running game in check as Fobbs is shaken up. Four carries for just eight yards thus far for Fobbs. He led the team in rushing this year, 846 yards. He broke a freshman record at Oklahoma State that was set by Andre Richardson back in 1994. Andre Richardson, one of the guys that that academically was not able to participate this year. He was the leading returning rusher. Nice job by Jamal Falbs and Nathan Simmons filling in and taking up the slack. And take a look at the end of the play, just a good hit coming from the inside just when he was a little bit exposed. Take a look at the hit coming from the inside of the defense. Simmons in a tailback, R.W. McWhorter's in on third and seven. Tight end, wide open, great round. Fell down, but he may have enough for the first down at the 41. 
Well, he got enough for the first down, but he could have run for a lot longer time because he had an escort out there. Nathan Simmons was out there in front of the play as a lead blocker, and Greg Brown just was not able to, to keep up. Again, R.W. McQuarters in the game. He clears out. Watch the tight end crossing now. And you can see R.W. McQuarters, again, the respect he gets. He clears out the defense, running through the defense, and that opens up a big hole for the tight end. I don't blame the guy for falling down. He only got six passes all year. That's two in the first half. He's beat. Two tight ends on first and ten. Lindsey back to the air. Not much there. Now the tight end stags. Garrett stags first down. Yes, they missed their great tight end, but they're still going to the tight end, and it's working. I really like this Tony Lindsay. I, I, again, I just like his cool head. I like his poise. He really is patient on this bootleg play. There's a lot of people around the line of scrimmage for Purdue. Watch him suck him in with the play action fake, and watch how patient he is. Waits till he gets out and has an open throw to the tight end. That's just good patience on the perimeter by Tony Lindsay waiting for his receiver to clear. get some young quarterbacks and they, they feel like they have to force something to happen to try to make plays all the time and he just doesn't do that he doesn't force me plays very much within himself got the timeout right before the play clock and it can't blame the freshman this is the second time this drive that a play has been late coming in timeout OSU Texas less than five minutes remaining in the first half Purdue up by four over Oklahoma State that is Ron Kalkek he's the quarterback coach for Oklahoma State and he was talking about Tony Lindsay, how impressed he was. Said, I've, I've coached Andre Ware of a Heisman Trophy, David Klingler, a Davey O'Brien Award, and Gus Farad of Tulsa. And this young man, as a freshman, is more poised at this point in his career than those three combined. He's got incredible poise, incredible maturity, plus he's got some awfully quick feet. And Todd Blackman, to know you were impressed with this young man's maturity. Yeah, I really like his decision-making and his poise. He really doesn't try to force plays, and that's, that's the best thing he does. Out of the timeout, they run with Lindsey. He has the first down. Lindsey inside the 10, first and goal, Cowboys. Big block from Josh Henson springing him. This is a designed quarterback draw. It's almost actually a quarterback trap. He's got to be patient and let the thing develop, but he does a nice job letting this play open up. Watch the Henson get the trap block. He gets a nice lead by the fullback, Aikens. And then on the outside, he gets a nice block by the wide receiver, Willie Grissom. That's just good patience, very good execution on the quarterback draw trap by Tony Lindsay. R.W. McQuarters comes in the game. He's the one who ran through from the right to the left of the offense on first and goal. Lindsay keeping to the six. Lamar Conrad and Willie Burroughs in on the tackle. Lindsay on the key, tackled by Willie Burroughs. Just a pickup of one, it will be second and goal for Bob Simmons' offense. Your attention, please. Daniel May, please call Kathy May. This offense ranks 10th in the May. nation in rushing with 226 yards. May. And this drive has been a long one for OSU. And as we talked about, one of the ways to defend Purdue is to keep that offense on the sidelines. This is a good clock-eating drive for Oklahoma State. Toss to Simmons. Not much running room over there on the right side. And face third and goal from the five. Again, this is the situation, I said it the last time they were in the red zone, a situation where they really missed their All-American tight end, Alonzo Mays. The backup tight ends have done a pretty nice job, but they just don't have the skill that Alonzo Mays has. That's six foot six, 245 pounds, great hands, great leaper. He was just a mismatch against any linebacker or defensive back down around the end zone. And he's just a, he's a guy they vitally miss in situations like this in scoring territory. Hawthorne on the coverage. Field goal time for OSU. 
That's strength on strength. McWhorter's the best receiver. Hawthorne the best cover guy. And McWhorter just gets a little tripped up trying to come out of his break to throw a little bit wide by Lindsey. But watch as McWhorter tries to change directions and get out of the break. He gets tripped up a little bit in the end zone. The field goal attempt will be 22 yards for Tim Shittis. Made one from 34. 12 for 12 inside the 40 this year, including the one earlier tonight. And from the tough angle, angle the sophomore out of Oklahoma City makes it a one-point game. And Mike Hawthorne was close to getting that field goal. He was also close on the first field goal. They better shore up that left side of their kick protection because Mike Hawthorne coming very quickly off the corner nearly got that one. So Oklahoma State's offense not able to get it in the end zone. They get a field goal and it is seven to six. Well, R.W. McQuarters, he's been on the field for most of the first half of this 97 Builders Square Alamo Bowl. If they can't get him the ball throwing it to him, they've got to find other ways, run him on a reverse, maybe get it to him on a quick screen, some way to get his hands on the football because he is really dangerous in the open field, whether he's catching a punt or whether he's catching the ball as a receiver or a runner. When he gets out in the open field, he's just got great speed and vision and can make big plays. He's been on the field about 65 or 70 percent of the time tonight. Doesn't look too uh, worse for wear either. The coach has told us he's in outstanding shape and uh, that they don't have a concern about that with him getting too much work. And plus they said, hey, look, this is our last game. He's got the whole offseason to rest. And he doesn't have to go to basketball. He's played basketball right. for OSU the last couple of years. Not on Eddie Sutton's team this year. So he can rest up till spring ball after tonight. Speaking of basketball, both schools have big basketball games tonight. OSU is playing at TCU. And as you saw earlier on SportsCenter, fifth ranked Purdue losing tonight to Michigan State. Short kick, here's Lee Johnson. That's a he was wrapped up, could have been brought down. Chris Carter couldn't bring him down. It is Purdue ball. And first down. Well, as we get Purdue's offense on the field, let's go to Pasadena for a moment and check in with Chris Fowler. Chris, what do you have for us? Well, Mike, a reminder that coming up on the New Dodge Halftime Report as Lee and Kirk join me, we'll have a Rose Report focusing on Woodson and Leith, the two dynamic leaders, neither guy planning to back down. Down at the Orange Bowl, there's some concern about the field conditions. If you saw that CarQuest Bowl game, you know what we're talking about. And also a Bowl Week recap, some interesting tids and trends to look at. That's all at halftime. Mike? See you guys then. See you guys tomorrow. Looking forward to joining the guys out in Pasadena for our coverage of the Rose Bowl. Remember college game day, 10 a.m. New Year's morning. Start the new year with Prince and Company. Dick it up top on first down. Step for step with Alfred was Kevin Williams. Down to Dr. Jerry Punch. Guys, it's my pleasure to visit with Marty and Lorraine Bacola. And Marty is Executive Vice President of Builder Square. And Marty, i got to ask you, you got to be so excited. Another great matchup and a huge crowd here for this Alamo Bowl. We're really excited. This is terrific. I mean, the city of San Antonio is just excited about everybody being here. The impact here has been wonderful. Where have you seen the most impact from this football game and your involvement for your company? Well, of course, for our company, it's great to have the exposure. But for the city of San Antonio, $15 million worth of impact is great. And $8 million worth of impact over the last four years for higher education is fantastic. Well, Marty and Lorraine, thanks for joining us. And by the way, happy anniversary, happy 25th. And if you're an OSU fan having an anniversary, R.W. McWhorter gives you a reason to celebrate there. He intercepts Billy Dickin and OSU has great field position. And Mike, not a, just an oh-by-the-way interception, a layout, extend-your-body interception, one-on-one -on -one against Brian Alford. It's a slant route that's a little bit overthrown, but watch McWhorter find the football and then extend. What a great play by R.W. McWhorter. He looks like a wide receiver there. Well, he is a wide receiver. <laughs> Take a look at that. Gets his arms under the football. Folks, you just can't coach plays like that. that. That is just a great play by a great player. Let's see if Oklahoma State can be as opportunistic as Purdue was earlier. They turned an interception on their half of the field into seven points. Lindsey goes to the air and Sean Love. He lost the ball. Picked up by Purdue. It's Lee Brooks. Oklahoma 
State players are saying it's coming back for an illegal block. We'll see how Bill Goss and the SEC crew straighten it out. After the fumble was recovered on the return, illegal block from behind on the defense. A little winded there, <laughs> making that call, but this is a crazy kind of play. Let's take a look again as the ball is going to Sean Love. It's a little quick screen. Does he have possession? Yes, he has it, and then loses it. Mike Hawthorne makes the strip, and Lee Brush comes up with the fumble, and boy, turnabout is fair play. Two big turnovers in a row. Watch again. Does Sean Love have possession of the football? I think he does. I think he has it into his chest and takes a step forward and then just a good hit up around the chest area by Mike Hawthorne knocks it loose. Back-to-back -back snap with turnovers. Purdue gets it back. Donald Winston. Nice move by Winston. Picked up about eight yards across midfield. That's the little bubble screen that has been very popular for Purdue this season. It's a quick throw. You've got three receivers on the one side, and you get the ball in the hands. It's almost like a running play out on the side of the field. It's, it's very important that the other two receivers out there become very good blockers. To make that play work, those receivers have to block. That time, a good game for Purdue. They have time as we move inside of a minute 10, and they have timeout. Two of them. Dickens, first down, Vinny Sutherland. 36-yard line. Five foot ten freshman. Dickens wrapped up and thrown down. One of the tacklers, Corey Simpson, number two. Very confusing. They have two number twos and two number tens on the Oklahoma State team, and they can play as long as they're not on the field at the same time. So Maurice Simpson, who shares the same jersey as Jamal Fobb, the tailback, that is legit as long as they're not playing at the same time. Purdue with two timeouts left. They've got time to get this ball down in scoring territory for sure. Dickin looking quick for Donald Winston and incomplete. Dickens pass intended Evan Howes is a eight. young corner, and they Evan really Howell think he's going to be an outstanding player, but he needs to learn that he made a good play there. He doesn't have to put his hands up in that surrender <laughs> pose because that's going to attract the flag more often than not. He made a good play. Keep those hands down like, yeah, that was no question that was a good play. <laughs> Brush is the opportunistic man picking up the turnover, and let's see if Dickin can add to his offensive numbers. He was 7 of 11 for 128 passing yards in the first half, so not much yet. Isaac Jones with the catch. Pulled down by Billy Stone. Those Dickin numbers that were 7 of 11 in the first quarter. He saw his first half numbers as he takes his second timeout with 35 seconds left. For the night of sports, right after the football at Sports Center, and after that, the championship game of the Rainbow Classic. Take it to Hawaii for hoops and the rainbows of the home team. So it should be a great crowd in the special event center against Paul Pierce in Kansas. Pierce had 34 last night in the KU victory over Vanderbilt. Vandy got it to within one with two minutes left, but Pierce had some key defensive plays. Stepping up without Ray Fletcher's Rainbow Classic championship game tonight on ESPN. You know, I know McWhorter's made a great interception the last time Purdue had the football, the last time he was lined up against Brian Alford, but I'm not so sure I go right back at that matchup. If they go with man-to-man -man coverage and no help with McWhorter's, I'm not so sure I take another chance with Brian Alford a little bit further down the field and let him use his big body at 6'2 and his height advantage over R.W. McWhorter's and try to make a play down around the end zone. There are not many height mismatches you can take advantage of right. if you're Purdue. Their receivers are small. Donald Winston, five foot seven. Vinny Sutherland, five foot ten. Gabe Cox hasn't been hurt from much tonight. Five foot ten. They need to get just to about the 25 for a first down. And Dickens just about there with John Blackman, the tight end. Trent Alexander wrote him out. They've used that combination a lot. Again, that's 
Blackman and Alford on the same side. Alford running the slant route, the tight end on the quick arrow route to the sideline, and the quarterback just reads. Is the inside route there? No. The tight end is late coming in there. It's an easy completion for John Blackman. The chains are not on that side, so where you see that uh, little piece for the down marker was not exactly the first down. And they're bringing the chains over from the far side to check it out. This is an, a really important part of this football game because it's been pretty well played, very evenly played, a one-point difference, and both teams looking for something to get some momentum to take into halftime with, and Purdue trying to put points on the board, Oklahoma State trying to come up with a big stop, and at, at worst-case scenario, settle for a field goal. First down, 29 seconds left. Tiller's team has one timeout, and they don't have a big leg kicker they need to move it at least another eight or ten yards to feel comfy about a field goal digging for alfred and mcquarters was right with him step for step and you see rw didn't put his arms up like he surrendered he knew he made a good play and he just jumped up and down a couple times like that that's the way you're supposed to play it you can't call a penalty on that nice play by rw mcquarters getting his right hand on the football this is a great matchup, him and Brian Alford. Watch him just get his right hand in there. That's a good play. Left hand wasn't even engaged with the back of the receiver. Outstanding play by R.W. McWhorter. Two-way standout for this team. Really three-way when you consider that he's on all those punt and kick returns. They've got some confusion right now. All four receivers to the same side. Back to Alford. They're going to throw it back to Dickens. Incomplete. Terrell Nalls was putting pressure on Alfred to try to make the throwback after the lateral. And big Jamal Williams had visions of a touchdown. He actually read the play very well and was in position to make an interception or at least deflect the pass. And he stumbled as the ball was getting to him before he had visions of six points going the other way. Take a look at big number 99 at the bottom of the screen. Watch as he reads this play develop. Really a good read by Jamal. See him roll out of there and watch. He sees a football. Oh, oh. <laughs> he wants offensive pass appearance call there. <laughs> Third and ten from here. It's a 43-yard field goal. They could use a few yards. Donald Winston, the intended receiver, it will be fourth down. Good defensive series in the quick turnaround situation by Oklahoma State that time. That, that's excellent defense forcing Purdue to settle for a field goal attempt. Again, R.W. McQuarters against Brian Alford on the left side of the defensive formation. R.W. right there. I still think maybe if you run him down the field and throw that football up and let Alford try to make a play, you got a better chance than on the short round. Shane Ryan's field goal is good. A flag down. Ryan's long of the year, as you saw, was 44. That was a 42-yarder. And he was only 4 of 9 from outside of 30 yards, but hit a true one there. I what do you do now if it's on OSU? Now, I don't think you take any points off the board. You're fourth and ten. Offside. Take the points. On the defense. Finish the climb. Field goes good. Well, Joe Tiller keeps the points on the board, and Purdue's lead is four. Well, in a moment, we'll be talking about a Big Ten team on the new Dodge Halftime Report with Chris Lee and Kirk at the Rose Bowl, Mike Adamley and Sean Salisbury in Miami at the Orange Bowl. Talk about Woodson and Leach, the Orange Bowl issues, and preview Pitt Southern Miss tomorrow's 3.30 Eastern kick in the Liberty Bowl. <laughs> and the small Purdue fans don't know that it's been a long wait for a bowl game. So long a wait, she dozed off. <laughs> What a turnaround for Purdue, for both teams. We've been saying it over and over, but just to give you some perspective, four years ago, when some of the 16 seniors were freshmen, this team was 1-10, in 10, and they thought they'd be playing in perhaps the Outback Bowl because they finished ahead of Wisconsin, tied for second in the Big Ten standings. However, the Outback Bowl choosing Wisconsin, and the Boilers and their entire university traveling party thrilled to be here. Yeah. And you know what's really impressive, too, is you take a look at Joe Tiller. I think a key to their season was the way he handled the team 
after the opening loss to Toledo. Everybody was wondering, was the, were the coaches going to really get down on them? He kept an even keel. They bounced back and beat Notre Dame, and that was a big difference in the turnaround. Marks the line drive kickoff is returned to the 40-yard line by Jeremy Hafferty, the backup fullback, to make a shin stop. The players weren't really sure how Joe Tiller and the new staff was going to react. And they came in and they just said, hey, look, we did some encouraging things. Let's learn from our mistakes. Let's just keep doing what we're doing. And let's go out and play better next week. And I think his approach to that loss and the response that the team had after that losing situation, instead of the feeling of, oh, here we go again, another bad season at Purdue, they were able to suck it up and get it refocused and then get the huge win against Notre Dame the next week to break an 11 year drought against the Irish. Probably last play of the half, barring a foul. Lindsay puts it up top. It should have been picked off, but both Brush and Hawthorne were going after it. It falls incomplete. The first half comes to an end. R.W. McCorder has played about two-thirds of this half, 54 plays, but didn't have a huge impact statistically. Had a couple of nice breakups, though, on defense. At the break, Purdue leads by four. Now the new Dodge halftime report to Pasadena and Chris Fowler. Boys, one for the Boilermakers. It's Purdue by four at the break. Dr. Jerry Punch on the sidelines, Mike Tirico, Todd Blackledge. We talked about R.W. McCorder's coming in and said he could really be a big impact offensive player tonight. Maybe the better job for him done on defense in the first half. Yeah, we also said maybe he let down a little bit on defense through the year. Not tonight. He has played outstanding football on the defensive side. Now, he wanted to establish early on when Brian Alford came to the left side of the defense, he was going to have his hands full with R.W. McQuarters. And every time Alford tried to get off the line of scrimmage, McQuarters right there really focused in very well. Here, the great diving interception in the second quarter on offense. This was his only catch of the ball game. Good for nine yards. They need to try to get him the ball more in the second half. They tried to go to him for a touchdown in the end zone. Couldn't get to this Tony Lindsay pass. It's out of the 70 total plays in the first half, 12 on offense and just the one reception. On defense, 36 plays, most of the snaps, three pass breakups in there as well, and then seven kick return situations, although he didn't make a return. About 77% of the plays in the first half, McQuarter's on the field. To the field, and let's check in with Dr. Jerry Punch. Guys, at halftime, talked to both coaches. First, Oklahoma State's Bob Simmons, concerned about the fact that his offense was out of sync. He said, you know, the turnovers hurt us. If it wasn't for our defense playing so well, we should be down by 14 right now instead of four. So we've got to come out in the second half, get the football, and establish the run. We've got to do what we do best. Now, across the field, Joe Tiller talked to his defense about, hey, guys, let's get physical. We've got to be physical. We've got to go after the football. We've got to get turnovers. And regarding his offense, he said, well, guys, we have got to be able to maybe try to run the football. But if they put so many men in the line of scrimmage and we can't run it, then we'll just back up and toss it. And we'd like to be able to establish the run. Back up there. Doc, thank you. It's a Purdue offense that scored 33 per game and only put up 10 in the first half. There is R.W. McQuarters set for the second half kickoff, but he won't touch it. Knocked nearly out of the end zone by Chris Arntz, the senior out of California. OSU drive start at their own 20. Here are the numbers from the first half that McQuarters contributed to in every column. Purdue with 203 yards of total offense only twice this year, but the Boilermakers held under 400 yards in a game, each team turning it over twice. As Dr. Jerry Punch told us about Bob Simmons telling his team they've got to run the football only 65 yards in that first half, well below their season average of 226 yards a game. They were the 10th best rushing team in the country coming into tonight. Nathan Simmons is the starting tailback for this half, and he cuts it back to the left with no place to go. Roosevelt Calvin, the junior out of Indianapolis, with 10 sacks this year, was there for the stop. Roosevelt Colvin, the best player along that defensive front. He's a very athletic guy. He's listed at 6'3", 245, really probably only about 230, 235 pounds, but does a nice job using leverage, keeping the defender away from his body, and then falling off to make the tackle. He had 19 tackles for loss this season, but at 245 pounds, one of the questions for Roosevelt, how much can he hang in there as games wear on? Covered by OSU's right guard, Adam Davis. 
Well, he's 245, but he's got speed. Yes, he does, and he did a great job not giving up on this play and chasing Tony Lindsay down from the backside. Tony Lindsay, as we've seen in the first half, has excellent speed. Take a look at Colvin chasing the play. First, he makes sure that it's not coming out to his side, and then just great pursuit, and then the Lawrence Taylor move to strip down with the right hand against the throwing arm. Watch the quick pursuit, and again, the strip down with the right arm. That's the move that Lawrence Taylor made famous, and everybody that chases a quarterback now tries to employ it. Good job by Roosevelt Colvin. Well, Davis, who recovered the fumble, was the man who Colvin got past. Third and 14. They need to get the, to the 30 to keep the drive alive. Pressure from Rose was picked up. Intercepted again by Beasley. Adrian Beasley's second interception. Adrian Beasley down the sidelines to the six-yard line. The exact same problem for Tony Lindsay as his last interception, trying to throw the ball down the middle to the tight end with a free safety hanging in the middle and the ball in the air way too long. You just can't throw the ball to the tight end. Here's Beasley right here. Watch him just read the quarterback as that ball tries to come to the tight end. You just can't loft the ball down the middle of the field when there's a free safety there. He's going for his tight end, Garrett Staggs. Adrian Beasley, an easy interception for Purdue. Purdue, an excellent red zone offense team. And win Watson to the two. It will be second and goal. Kenyatta Wright helps stop the touchdown. When you're throwing down the middle of the field, you have to put this throw on a rope. The tight end, there is a seam there, but you can't put this much air under it going to the tight end. Clearly overthrew Garrett Staggs and an easy interception for Beasley. Two picks tonight. Gabe Cox out to the left. They're going to keep it on the ground. Great tackle by Kenyatta Wright. Stuffing Ed Watson. Boy, you're not getting what a great tackle. That is high impact collision right there. Kenyatta Wright at 232 pounds against Ed Watson at 225 pounds. Watch number seven fill this hole. Wow. That's good work by your middle linebacker. Again, the, the lack of a fullback in this offense. There's no lead back for Ed Watson. Dick and keeping. Second effort. in the end zone. Yeah, there's a flag now because Al Alford and R.W. McWhorter's got into a little pushing match again on the outside. If this goes against Brian Alford, it's going to it's going to uh -oh. ne negate the touchdown by Purdue. Wow. Unless it was after the play, it could be a dead ball penalty and not affect the touchdown. This will be interesting to see. SEC officials. There's a touchdown. Yeah. After the score, personal foul, dead ball it's a 15 yard penalty on the extra point. It was a similar exchange to what happened in the very first series for Purdue. Just a little physical physical exchange. It was just a matter of when the referee was going to look up because he could have called it on either McQuarters or Alford. He just happened to see the last shot by Brian Alford. So it is a touchdown and with the lead 10, this becomes now a 35 yard extra point for Shane Ryan. And he missed it. Make a mental note of that. The lead is 10 instead of 11. The second effort touchdown keeper by Billy Dickin. Our second touchdown of the game. And the senior puts Purdue up by double digits. Builder Square Alamo Bowl is presented by Builder Square, Heckinger, and Home Quarters, and in part by Quality Care Service at your Ford and Lincoln Mercury dealers. The Purdue Boilermakers lead by 10. Yeah, it's easy to go without your shirt when you're indoors <laughs> here at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio. Again, that opportunistic defense of Purdue. I mean, they have not been a great defense statistically in terms of 
stopping people for low yardage amounts, but they have forced a lot of turnovers, and then they take advantage of it. This one will be held under wraps by Kevin Williams, and Oklahoma State will get the ball to 20. Well, one guy who certainly came out of the locker room ready to play that last series was Roosevelt Colvin, the junior defensive end. Here he stops Nathan Simmons on the running play on first down. And then on second down, watch him pursue Tony Lindsay from the backside on this bootleg. Not only get to the quarterback, but knock the ball loose, causing a fumble. Oklahoma State would recover, but set up that third down and long situation that led to the interception. New quarterback, Chris Haluka, hands it off to Jamal Fobb. Game five across the 25, Leo Perez, the senior, in on the tackle. Well, Chris Haluka started the first two games this year. There you see his numbers, and uh, Todd, I guess we could easily say to categorize him, he's the better passer, pure passer, of the two quarterbacks. Yeah, and he was bothered for most of the year. He had a broken left hand, had kind of a big wrap, a soft cast on it for most of the year, and he's totally healed now. He's handling the ball a lot better, and I'm sure he's excited to be in there for this opportunity. Incomplete for Garrett Steggs, the tight end. It will be third down. Haluka is a Texan. Sophomore at 6'2", 218 pounds. He's one of the 20 Texans on the Oklahoma State roster. When I talked to Ron Calcagni yesterday at practice, he didn't think that Haluka was going to get in the ball game tonight. He was pretty confident that Tony Lindsay would go the whole way, but we mentioned how Lindsay had been so good at making good decisions. Two bad decisions throwing the ball late down the middle for interceptions, and therefore we see Haluka now. He's been struggling on third down, flag down, Aiken to fullback, has the first down, spinning move. He is a load to bring down. Beasley finally spills him, but let's check the laundry. 18-yard pickup for Brian Aikens, the junior from New Jersey. Will it stand up? Apparently so. Offside defense. Finish the plan. First down. Well, Aikens caught just two balls all year, but when he gets going north and south. <laughs> That's why he was so wide open, because he only caught two balls. Nobody covered him. Watch him come out of the backfield. He's in the slot. You see... Nobody covers him. Mike Rose, number four, runs right by him. They say they're not going to throw the fullback. Oh, yes, they will. Bob's the tailback back in. Another flag down. Halvin in on the tackle. And we'll check this mark. Oklahoma State did not commit a penalty in the first half. It was five on the Boilermakers. And they add to that total here. Offside defense. Then it's five yards. First down. Let me correct that. OSU had one five-yard penalty in the first half, but now two back-to-back five-yard penalties from the Boilermaker team. A third down conversion was a big play for Chris Halupka because it, it gave him some confidence. He's got his team out around the 50-yard line, and if he can drive his team down and get some points, this will, this will be a big boost for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. On first and five, Halupka's nearly intercepted. Doug Withers, the sophomore from South Pasadena, California, was dreaming about an INT. Zone defense, that's just a good zone drop by the inside linebacker, Doug Withers, and gets right into the pass zone. Here's Withers right here. Watch him just read the quarterback and drop into coverage and just get his hands on the football. That's just a nice job by Doug Withers, reading the eyes of the quarterback. The intended receiver, Sean Love, going across the middle. But a good play by the linebacker for Purdue. Bob sees the tailback on second and five and gets the delay. Jamal Bob with some space. First down across the 48-yard line. Mike Hawthorne up from his quarterback spot. 11 pulls down two. That's the difference between Nathan Simmons and Jamal Fobb. Simmons more the physical runner. Fobb more the scat back guy that can make people miss. He did a lot on this run. Watch the plays designed to go to the right side of the offensive formation. Makes a good cut here and comes all the way back across the field. Nice job by Sean Love there at the end of the play. Knowing he couldn't get a clean block. Pulling off and allowing Fobb to go by himself and get the first down. 
First and 10 OSU into Purdue territory. And here is Fox again. First down and more. To the 36-yard line. A pickup of 12. This is what Bob Simmons wanted to see from his football team coming out of the locker room. They didn't get it on their first possession, but they are getting a better push up front and running the football. Let's watch that offensive line come off. Great block by the left tackle, David Camacho. Josh Henson, the left guard, get a good push on the left side. That's good work up front. Everybody gets involved in the blocking game here. Here's Sean Love going against the strong safety, Lee Brush. He's also integral in that play being successful. Two tight ends. To look at the one of them, Greg Brown. Beasley makes the stop at the 20. They pick up 15 yards. It's first and 10 again for OSU. See the difference, though? Thrown to that tight end down the middle. you got to put some steam on that ball. You can't loft it in the middle of the field when you're throwing down the middle of the tight end. That was a good job by Haluka putting a little zip on that ball, getting it to his tight end quickly. Oklahoma State down 10. One of their best offensive drives of the night. Bob. Jamal Bob. Into the end zone. Touchdown. There were three great blocks on this play. It was the counter trap. The left tackle and the left guard are going to pull. Watch Josh Henson, 62. David Camacho, 75. And watch Sean Love at the top of the screen. The wide receiver got a block on Mike Hawthorne, and that allowed Fobbs to get it to the end zone. Sitting is on for the extra point. The lead is three. Jamal Fobbs, an outstanding freshman who has some great cutting ability. He ran for three touchdowns this year. This touchdown has made the Builder Square Alamo Bowl a three-point game. More Oklahoma State fans in the crowd of 55,552 here in San Antonio, and they have reason to cheer. Jamal Fobbs on the ground. Some key runs on that touchdown drive. It changed quarterbacks, and it works. A three-point game. Chris Popkin. Tackles just across the 20 and about the 22-yard line. Billy Dickin in the offense back on the field. We'll take a look at Billy Dickin in the first half. Oklahoma State wanted to try to get to him, hit him, knock him around, knock him on the ground. They were able to put pretty good pressure on him, but he hung in there. Here's the touchdown to Brian Alford. Does a great job throwing under pressure. And then the interception by Kevin Williams. He kind of baited him. Kevin Williams looking right at Brian Alford, even though he's got coverage on the outside. He's reading the eyes of Billy Dickin and slips in to make the interception. So for Billy Dickin, some good, some bad for the quarterback, the senior for Purdue. Drive start at the 22, and Watson runs for three. It'll be second and seven. Dr. Jerry Punch for more on Billy Dickin. Guys, at halftime, Purdue head trainer Denny Miller was working on Billy Dickens, as was Don Shelford, who's the head team physician for the Indianapolis Colts, here with Purdue at this bowl game today. Now, Dickens was hurt in the first half. He doesn't know when, but his throwing shoulder, the back of his shoulder, that's the same shoulder he had operated on when he was a redshirt freshman for dislocation. They put some ice on, they massaged it, but he has yet to throw the football in the second half. There you see the hits that he took throughout that opening half. On second and eight, here's his first pass. And Watson has a lot of room. And Watson down the sideline. Caught from behind at the 16. What a big game. 60 yards worth, or rather 50 yards worth. Boy, Purdue caught Oklahoma State in the perfect setup here. Oklahoma State has got everybody around the line of scrimmage. There's nobody deep, and so as soon as this ball is gone, watch when Watson gets it. There's no orange shirts downfield. He breaks one tackle. He gets a block from Isaac Jones. That's all he needed, and then he shows you the speed down the sideline. The perfect call at the perfect time against that Oklahoma State defense. Great blocking from those receivers. First and ten. They flip the field on OSU into the red zone. Vinny Sutherland has great speed. Vinny Sutherland, touchdown!
the flag is in the end zone and probably celebration. One of the ways you counter an aggressive defense is misdirection yeah, like a reverse. Touchdown. After the score, dead ball foul, personal foul on the defense. It was half the distance to the goal line on the trifle point. Two great calls in a row by Joe Tiller and his staff. First with the bubble screen and then back it up with the reverse against that aggressive defense. Leading by nine, Purdue will go for one, even though the try comes from a yard and a half closer. Extra point is good by Shane Ryan. Boilermakers lead by 10 after the speedy freshman from West Palm Beach, Florida, Vinny Sutherland, runs it in the second time he's done that this year. Watch the defense react to the fake to Watson. Everybody's running with Watson. They don't pick up Sutherland. A great block by Chucky Jacoby. And then on the outside, Brian Alford with another key block downfield to get Sutherland to the end zone. The block by Jacoby in the guard position. And then watch Alford downfield as he turns and gets Kevin Williams pinned to the inside. And Sutherland goes to the corner of the end zone. Good play, good block by Brian Alford. Sutherland, some consider one of the speediest and most exciting players in Purdue's recent history. Big time speed. 10, 30, 100 meters type guy in his high school track days. And he could be down the line. A Tim Dwight type yeah. of player for Purdue. And he's also talked about his desire to play on both sides of the ball. Maybe getting involved playing in defense. He already returns kick. An exciting speed guy for Purdue. That's nice to see some guy who wants to go from <laughs> offense to defense. <laughs> You know, and how about the response and the resiliency of Purdue after that good drive by Oklahoma State where they run the football right down at them and get it in the end zone to draw back within four. An immediate response by Purdue on two huge plays. He is a bundle of electricity. You can see it on the sideline. Five foot ten. Arch's kickoffs have been great tonight. It's been tough to return, but this one will come back from Dante Hill. Does not get to the 20. Purdue having to cover a kick covers it well. Well, how about your New Year's Eve plans? How about New Year's Eve on ice tonight on Frozen Pond? National Hockey Night. Brett Hall is injured, but Grant Few are having a fine season for St. Louis, taking on Detroit. Of course, led by Steve Eiserman. 97 will be a year Red Wings fans always remember. They won the Stanley Cup, and Brendan Shanahan hopes to keep them in contention again this year. Shanny tied for the NHL lead with nine power play goals. You'll see Brendan Shanahan in the wings go against his old team, the Blues, tomorrow night. Aluka to the air right away, McQuarters. R.W. McQuarters. Oh, Dippy footwork to pick up the first down. Leo Perez on the tackle. So you see why he is such an effective player. All that was was just like a move on a punt return. He had a blocker out there, David Camacho, but Camacho fell down. So it's all up to McWhorters by himself. And watch the quick feet. Just like he's making one guy miss on a punt return, he makes two guys miss, dance along the sideline. That's just great individual effort. Watch McWhorters again. The footwork, extra fast on this carpet. McWhorters is now split to the far side. He's changed the color of his band-aid up under his eye here for the second half. Here he is again. Mike Hawthorne impeded his progress. Mike Rose made the tackle. We are seeing some very good coaching decisions by both staffs right now. This is really good work by Les Miles, the offensive coordinator of Oklahoma State. Get McQuarters back in the ball game. Get him the ball quickly. Get him in the open field and let him use his skill to make people miss. Two good plays in a row for Oklahoma State. Second and three. That play blown up at the spot. Mike Rose leading the troops down to Dr. Punch. Todd Blackley, just adding to what you said a moment ago, I echo your comment about Les Miles. You know, when Les believes that when the game is on the line or when it's a critical part of the football game, you don't think plays, you think player. That's why when Purdue scored a moment ago and the defense came off, the first player the offensive coaches talked to was McWhorter. They patted him on the helmet, shook his hand, and he knew the McWhorter's package was coming. There is Les Miles, the offensive coordinator, an old Michigan man. Nine years of Michigan offensive line coach. 
with Bob Simmons of Colorado and now here running the offense. They run on third down and come up a couple of yards short. Nathan Simmons is tackled. It will be fourth down. Yeah, you know what, what Jerry's talking about is so true. Football is is not that complicated, really. It, it, it comes down to a matter of getting the ball to your best players. I mean, if you're not getting the football in the hands of your best players enough time, you're, you're, you're really hurting your chances of winning in a football game. And R.W. McWhorters is certainly the most explosive weapon the Cowboys have on offense. You watch the scores go by at the bottom of your screen, Oklahoma State fans. Happy that OSU's basketball team beat TCU by one tonight. Jason Davis. His punt goes out of bounds. Purdue's drive start will come from the 26. Pretty good first 10 minutes of the third quarter in San Antonio. Purdue by 10. Just a few steps from the river wall. And great Purdue, the All-American Purdue band. Led the Purdue Chargers, R.W. McQuarters at Oklahoma State, facing an important series here, down 10, five minutes left, third quarter. Watson had trouble handling it first, but gets about six yards and looks to be shaken up. Well, they can really ill afford to lose him because Kendall Matthews, the, the other back, is still nursing a torn hip flexor muscle that he hurt in the seventh game of the year. He's back practicing, but he's not 100%. Edwin Watson has really carried the load at that single running back position. Now Eric Haddad is in the ball game in place of Ed Watson. Second and five. They can adjust the play. Step for step with R.W. McWhorter. Really a great effort that time by Brian Alford, and he gave himself enough room on the sideline for the fade route. Watch him work inside to start the route. That gives the quarterback a chance to put it out over the outside shoulder away from the defender, but Alford just can't come down with the catch inbound. This is really an important series, I think, for the Oklahoma State defense. Uh, this is not an offensive team that's built for a lot of comeback football. They've got to keep this game within reach so they can utilize their running game to its all full effectiveness. Third and five, Dickens. See you later. Chris Daniel, touchdown. Sixty-nine yards. He caught two all year. He may not catch a bigger one in his future years at Purdue. That is an Alamo Bowl record 69-yard touchdown pass and catch, mostly done by the sophomore from Clearwater, Florida. in the extra point is Shane Ryan. Purdue leads by 17, 20 points in the first 11.08 of the third quarter. If you can't get to Billy Dickin in time, he is going to make you pay. Now watch the safety right here in the middle of the field, Ricky Thompson. Watch him get fooled and start to step up this way. That's going to open it right up on the inside for the touchdown to Chris Daniels. Watch the safety. Look at the quarterback and then step up, and that's all that Daniels needed to slip behind him to take the throw from Dickin. And a great throw from Billy Dickin right on a rope allowed Daniels to catch it on the run and take it to the end zone. Billy Dickin caught a touchdown pass this year, thrown by Chris Daniels. 33 yards. Actually, Daniels threw it to Brian Alford, I beg your pardon. It started with a Dickin, Dickin throw behind the line of scrimmage. Competitive, fiery, and a guy you really want to root for, Billy Dickens. And credit also to that offensive line, those five guys that started every game, that only gave up 19 sacks during the season. Given Billy Dickens time against this pressure man-to-man -man defense to find his matchup, 
and to get the ball to Chris Daniels for the big play. That is, you know, that, that's the whole game in a nutshell, really, between the Purdue offense and the Oklahoma State defense. Can the blitz get to the quarterback, or can Billy Dickin have enough time to make plays? He's made plays here to start the second half. Marks kicks, McCorders wants it, and has it. Here comes R.W. McCorders to the 15, and that is it. Billy Dickin has completed passes to eight different receivers, but what a story he is. He came to Purdue red shirting in his first year in football, was the starting shortstop on the basketball team. Then, the next year, he came in replacing the injured Rick Trepsker, started three games, but injured his shoulder in the last game. In 95, he missed six games with a torn rotator cuff, so he played secondary and special teams. Junior year, he comes in. The third game of the year against West Virginia, he fractures his sternum, comes back from injury, is not the starter to start the season in preseason fall camp, but goes on to be the All-Big Ten coach's choice as the best quarterback in the conference. Aluka on first down. Down 17. Completes it to the fullback, Brian Aiken, who carries half the Boilermaker defense for first down. Here's Dr. Gary Punt. Guys, to add to the Billy Dickens story, talk about what a great athlete he is. He is a scratch golfer, which is pretty tough to do, as Mike Tirico will tell you. He is a scratch golfer. He is the emergency field goal kicker. I'm told he's automatic up to 40 yards. And when Joe Tiller came to Purdue, he got all the guys together, took a bowling tournament as a team unity kind of thing. Dickens had never bowled. His first time he touched the bowling ball over 200 in the first game. Bowling, yep. shortstop on the baseball team, defensive back, he's done it all at Purdue and has won quite often this year. Jamal Bob, the first down across the 30, or to the 35, the first down run will set up second and one. You know, the other thing about Billy Dickin is he really made his move and earned this job in the three weeks of summer camp because he was not very impressive coming out of spring drills. He was not very accurate throwing the football. He stayed in West Lafayette all summer working with the receivers, working on throwing the football, working on it, on the timing and understanding the offense. And really, he won the job when he went into fall camp, and he's had a great year. He won the job from John Reeves, who you remember watching Big Ten games on ESPN last fall, started six games quarterback. Aluka is flush. Looking to create something high incomplete pass intended for Willie Grissom. It will be third and one for OSU. Aluka forced out of the pocket because of Roosevelt Colvin again. He's really having a good football game here. He gets around two guys. David Camacho and Josh Henson, nobody really got a good push on him. Forced Aluka to leave the pocket and throw off balance. That's a good pass rush, good effort by Roosevelt Colvin against two linemen from Oklahoma City. There's a little miscommunication on that play. It looked like it was going to be a throwback screen, possibly to the tight end, but Halupka got back there and really had nowhere to go with the football and tried to make a late throw downfield incomplete. As you quarterbacks always say, late and over the middle is a recipe for disaster. Boy, you're not kidding. Better get ready to go make a tackle if you do that. <laughs> you never had to do that, did you? Put your head on a swivel because those guys are going to try to try to crack you on the block as well. Do you think they look for quarterbacks a little bit extra? Absolutely. <laughs> Spoken like a true quarterback. Well, there is Tony Lindsay, the freshman out of Denver, Colorado, who played with good poise in the first half, but then just a couple of mistakes, and mostly on the passes to the tight end. Yeah, down the middle late, trying to get the ball to the tight end too high, and, and, and with a free safety in the middle of the field. And those are things he'll just have to learn about and learn from and try not to repeat when he starts out next year, or if he gets back in this ball game tonight. On second and 10, just a couple of yards for Nathan Simmons, who took a pop. Well, Oklahoma State has seen a 30 to something deficit and erased it this year. The Missouri game, October 25th, down 30 to 7. They come all the way back, take the lead, only to watch Missouri win in double overtime, 51 to 50. Lindsey led that comeback, but he had the All America tight end Mays with some unbelievable catches. Again, another third down situation without R.W. McQuarters in the ball game. And as Halupka got tied up coming back from center, his knee hit the ground, play dead right there, and it will be fourth down. 
Trying to get out of there. Looks like number 62, Josh Henson, the left guard, may have stepped on his foot as he tried to drop back. And he went down behind the line of scrimmage. Purdue fans to their feet as Lee Brooks and the rest of the defense forces Oklahoma State's Jason Davis to punt. Jason Davis in punt formation for the Cowboys. Third punt of the night for Davis. 38-yarder and a deep receiving for the two-yarder. Vinny Sutherland has a touchdown in this quarter. Gets to the outside. The Tim Dwight-esque return from Vinny Sutherland. Well, National Car Rental Bowl Week continues on ESPN. New Year's morning after game day, it's the Outback Bowl. Ron Day, 3,284 3, rushing yards through his sophomore year, taking on the potent passing attack of Mike Bobo and Georgia. The Outback Bowl, 11 a.m. Eastern, New Year's morning on ESPN. Todd, Mike Bobo had an excellent season for this Georgia offense. Yeah, he really did. Really was a nice compliment to the running of Robert Edwards and of course, they had some exciting guys to get the ball to, and guys like Hines Ward and Champ Bailey. That's a very explosive Georgia offense, and when they're on, when Mike Bobo's on and Robert Edwards is on, very difficult team to slow down. Much like this Purdue offense, when Billy Dickin is on like he is now, particularly in the second half, this offense, as every team in the Big Ten found out, very difficult to stop. They scored 33 per game this year. That was 21st in the nation. Edwin Watson back after his injury. Picks up a couple of yards. Terrell Nalls in on the tackle in the third quarter. Will come to an end. But what a quarter for Purdue. It was 10-6 starting the third quarter. But as we go to the fourth, Purdue has 30. In large part, two big plays. Joe Tiller's offense getting a quick jump start from Vinny Sutherland. And then a touchdown pass from Billy Dickett. Sutherland took it in the house, helping Purdue to a 30-13 lead the fourth quarter of the Builder Square Alamo Bowl when we come back from San Antonio, Texas. All right, watch this play. Fourth quarter, Purdue with a 20-point explosion in the third, leads the Builder Square Alamo Bowl by 17. Mike Tirico, Todd Blackledge, Dr. Jerry Punch, along with our ESPN crew here in San Antonio. Billy Dickett, oh, nice move, not to throw the interception, and Donald Winston has it ricochet off of his hands. Terrell Nall's eyes must have opened up there for a second, yeah. Todd. Well, that, that's a complete timing play. It's one step, boom, throw it out there. And Terrell Nall was right out in the throwing lane, and that forced Billy Dickin to double pump it, and that destroys the timing of the play. You see Nall's right there in the throwing lane, and Dickin just wasn't able to reload and make the throw. Nall's out of the Philadelphia High School area called Tulsa Home. For Purdue, get across midfield to get a first down. Brian Alford, first down across the 40-yard line. Stiff arm from McQuarters on the way out of bounds. Boy, Brian Alford did a nice thing here too, Mike. Did a great job of coming back to the football. He's running a crossing route, but watch him come back to the football to cut off the distance. Here he is in the middle. Watch now as he crosses the field. Watch him come back to the football and cut off the defender and then take it to the sideline. That's just a good veteran move by a guy who's caught a lot of passes in his career. Coming back to his quarterback, giving him the good target, both numbers and then making a nice run after catch. Alfred's fourth catch, he has 61 yards. From the 39-yard line. Tough couple of inside yards for Ed Watson. You know, it was fun talking to Joe Tiller the other day and talking to him about, you know, when he embraced this offense because he was an assistant at Purdue and he was kind of more of a run-oriented guy and he left Purdue in the 80s and went to Wyoming and he said he, he saw the light out there about the passing game and not only did he learn the value of the passing game in his time out there, but he also learned that if you don't have access to the same kind of people as the folks you're playing, you've got to be different. You've got to do some things different in order to be successful. And this Purdue offense certainly is different in terms of the Big Ten. Digging, looking. John Blackman in and out of his hands. Alfred cleared out the area for him. The tight end couldn't hang on. It will be third down. The 20 Purdue points in the third quarter 
boosting the Boilermaker numbers as we look at the stats through three quarters. Purdue now 283 yards of passing offense here in this 1997 Builder Square Alamo Bowl. A big part of that explosion in the third quarter attributed to the resiliency of Billy Dickin. I mean, he didn't have a great first half. He threw a couple interceptions. They knocked him around a little bit. But he just hung in there, came out in the third quarter, no shaking of his confidence, and made some big plays in that quarter. Here's a third down coming up. Didn't like what he saw. Took a timeout. We'll step aside with him. Well, the folks who enjoyed staying downtown this week had a chance to walk over and visit this great landmark, the Alamo. And just a few steps from the Alamo is the Riverwalk, where the Purdue band and fans and Oklahoma State fans have really had a great time in this city that will host the college basketball Final Four in March. Last time they were in this formation, they brought Alfred on the crossing route over the middle. Third and seven. Dickin looking the same way. A hair behind him and well covered by Kevin Williams. Flag is down. Back by the quarterback. Maybe a late hit on Dickens. Did they rough the passer? No Goss, our referee. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Head contact on the defense. 15 yards in the automatic well, Rob Ryan told us yesterday that he would be able to live with a couple personal fouls if they were getting to the quarterback, but that would have been at a point in the game when they weren't down by 17 points, and Purdue wasn't moving into scoring position again. That was a play where Terrell Knowles probably should have pulled off on that play because it was not a good throw anyway by Billy Dickin. Lost opportunity that time for the Oklahoma State defense. With a five-yard penalty, the penalty after the touchdown that was just for a yard. This 15-yard, Purdue first and 10 at the 21. Dickin to the ground. Six yards, it will be second and four. Maybe that pressure forced some of the problems in the first half, but when you have this pressure on the quarterback, that means you have man coverage, and That's big right. plays can happen, and they did in the second you half. You are always vulnerable if you play that style of defense, if you take your free safety out of the middle of the field, if you try to bring extra people and leave yourself in single coverage, then you're always vulnerable to give up big plays if the offensive line protects for a guy like Billy Dickin, and that's what they were able to do in that third quarter, and that's why we saw a 20-point explosion. Second and four, five wide receivers. This is a Big Ten team. Dickin escapes, keeps, and it's gonna be real close. He does have the first down just outside the 10-yard line. Great effort by Billy Dickin, and he made a pretty good defender miss. That was Kevin Williams, number five, who was coming up to make the play. Watch Billy Dickin. He can't get rid of the ball quick. He eludes one right there. That's Courtney Mallory, but here's even more impressive. Eludes Ricky Thompson, the free safety, and picks up the first down. I mean, this guy is a competitor. He's also, as we've seen tonight, a very tough kid because he's, he's gotten beat around a little bit, but he has hung in there and made plays. this year comes up with the interception and what would have been the capping points not scored by Purdue he's not made many bad decisions but as you meant very much an ill-advised pass that time by Billy Dickin trying to avoid the sack as Jack Golden was right in there putting the pressure on him and as we've seen quarterbacks on both sides of the field, you don't carelessly throw the football into the middle of the formation, into the middle of the defense. It's Billy Dickin trying to avoid the sack. He's got his team down in scoring territory and just can't get enough on that ball to throw it out of the back of the end zone. Must possession for Oklahoma State. Movement up front. Pointing at Adam Davis, but was Purdue the cause of the movement.
Bill Goss has been busy in the second half. Ball start on the offense. Take a look again at that play by Billy Dickin, trying to avoid the loss. Good pressure by Oklahoma State, and then watch his reaction. He knows he made a bad decision. And Joe Tiller knows that that could have put this game on ice. That could have absolutely put his team in a, in a very comfortable position in this ballgame. First and 14 after the half the distance penalty, Jamal Boggs runs right into Greg Smith. The senior out of Chicago, Illinois, makes the tackle. Great play by Greg Smith. He and Leo Perez, the two tackles in there on that defense, the anchor guys. You know, they, they, they didn't like, one of the, the defensive coaches said, you know, these two guys are kind of lunch bucket type guys. And, and they, Perez and Smith, they're good friends. And they kind of took offense to that. They said, hey, that kind of translates that, that we just aren't just kind of steady. We are not spectacular. We don't make many plays. They say, hey, we make a lot of plays, too. And they kind of have used that to motivate them this year. Both Smith and Perez have had solid years for Purdue. Second and 11, Haluka. Nearly dropped, but the first down hung on to by Sean Love. At the 25, 19-yard pickup from Haluka. Haluka to Love. And if he's healthy, I think you. this is the time when R.W. McWhorters needs to get back into the football game. This is a good catch by Sean Love and a big conversion for Chris Haluka, but... R.W. McWhorters is your big play guy, and he has not been on the field offensively for a while now. And He's got to be tired, though. Well, obviously, half one yeah. of the game. Yeah. Right? And that's the problem. You can have these great athletes and get them on both sides of the ball, but when he's your best weapon on offense, you're in situations like you just talked about. Yeah. And when you're playing an offensive team like Purdue, where as a cornerback, you get no break. You have no rest whatsoever because every play, you're running down the field. Willie Grissom drop that pass and here comes for quarters now dr. Jerry punch guys exactly right what you're talking about is the fatigue factor for RW McWhorters he just came running on the field but literally he was on the sideline just trying to catch his breath playing defense offense special teams he really had didn't have a lot of gas left they kept him out in the first couple plays but now he's in on second down he's at the top of the screen Aluka going deep Nobody home. Double coverage on Sean Love. That looked like a case where the quarterback, Kaluka, just made up his mind where he was going with the football because, as you mentioned, double coverage. Again, a free safety in the middle of the field. Billy Gustin providing help down the middle, and Sean Love really had no chance to come up with that play. If you're just joining us, we welcome you to the Alamo Dome in San Antonio. Mike Tirico, Tom Blackledge, Dr. Jerry Punch on the sidelines for this sixth edition of the Middle Square Alamo Bowl. It was 10-6 Purdue after three. The Boilermakers exploding for three third-quarter touchdowns. Lead by 17. Big third and 10 for OSU. Over the middle for the tight end again. Incomplete. Billy Gustin had the coverage on the pass intended for Garrett Stay. I think there's going to be a penalty on Oklahoma State. I don't think they had a legal formation. R.W. McWhorter's not sure where he was supposed to line up on that play. Illegal motion on the offense. Penalties decline. Fourth down. And as Dr. Jerry Punch said, I think for the first time, we are really seeing the effects of fatigue on R.W. McWhorter's. He, he looks a little bit tired now out there on the field. He's played 84 out of 110 plays, and uh, no matter how great a shape he is in, he has not played a football game for a month. And that's an awful lot to ask of an individual. Whistles blow immediately. And Time Purdue out. takes Purdue. a timeout as Oklahoma State had its punch personnel on the field. Purdue is a little tardy. Step aside. The Boilermakers lead by 17. And the rhythm of life is a bobbling. Oklahoma State head coach Bob Simmons on the right has been talking to the Southeastern Conference officials throughout this timeout. Upset that Joe Tiller's team was able to get the timeout called when the Purdue punch personnel was not on the field. No change in it now. Jason Davis back in punch formation. Donald Winston deep to receive. Winston was cheating up for a fake punt. So he's driven all the way back to the 20. A nice open field tackle by Evan Howell, the backup DB. 
53 yard punt. He lost five on the return. So a 58 yard net for the Cowboys. That's a stat they've excelled in this year. Well, Billy Dickin has had a great second half, but Roosevelt Colvin has set the tempo for the Purdue defense because their defense was on the field first. Here in two consecutive plays, he gets after the quarterback, Tony Lindsay, forces the fumble. And again, the great pressure on the outside. Doesn't get a sack, but certainly hurries the throw. He has really stepped up the tempo here in the second half for Purdue. On first down, Edwin Watson able to pull the pile forward. He gained about four yards, and here's Dr. Jerry. We're talking about courage on this Purdue football team. We mentioned that Billy Dickens was playing the second half with a very, very short right shoulder. How about Edwin Watson, who went out on the final play of the third quarter with a mild separation of his left shoulder. Now, he said, I want to go back in the football game. Very, very uncomfortable. But remember, they only have one of the running back because Kendall Matthews had that torn hip flexor. So Watson playing with pain. Watson, a kid from Pontiac, Michigan. University of Michigan didn't show much interest. He's happy to be in the Big Ten. Here's the speedy and quick Vinny Sutherland again. Out of the 45-yard line. He picked up 22 and a first down. We've seen two reverses to Vinny Sutherland and two great blocks by the right guard, Chucky Jacoby, to spring this play. And again, the speed of Vinny Sutherland. Watch Jacoby here come out and get the block that springs Sutherland. There you see him on the ground. And then downfield, Brian Alford again, blocking for his wide receiver teammate, Vinny Sutherland. And well, that guy does have some quick feet. Either that or his legs are just so much shorter that it looks like they're moving hey, faster. But he back off, move. back off on the short guy's legs. <laughs> Dickin overthrows this man, but a flag is down as Alford was tied up by Kevin Williams. Williams and McQuarters have been tested and tested and tested, and Purdue has been able to hit a couple of big plays tonight, and that's really part of the story of this game. Passing. Take a look at here, just a simple hook route, and there you see the hook with the left hand of Kevin Williams. He tried to get away with it, but official right on the spot made the good call, and Oklahoma, def Oklahoma State defense, uh, Starting to show a little signs of weariness that this offense of Purdue is relentless. They just keep attacking, attacking, attacking downfield. And if you let down a little bit, they're going to burn you for a big play. Dickens shovel pass, Edwin Watson. Out of bounds at the 20. They're getting huge yardage chunks here in this second half. That was a 24-yard play. Sutherland had a 22-yarder two snaps before. And you can see him really favoring that shoulder that Dr. Punch was talking about. He's going to come out of the ball game. An excellent run on the shovel pass. Well designed, well executed by Purdue. And watch Edwin Watson at the end of this play. Takes a shot right there on his left shoulder trying to get to the sideline. Obvious pain. Eric Haddad from St. Ignatius High School in the Cleveland, Ohio area checks into the lineup. Dickens goes to the air up 17. Almost up 23. Near touchdown grab for Willie Tillman, but incomplete. Are you surprised that this Purdue offense has had this much success this year, considering that although there is some speed in, in the receiver court, this is not the perfect personnel just yet for Joe Tiller's offense. Well, it is a little bit surprising in that regard, but I think the, the reason is because of the emergence of Billy Dickin and how well he was able to adapt to this offense and spread the football around. They've got some speed. They were able to bring a couple young guys into the program and inject a little speed, but really it's because of Brian Dickin and his ability to pick this offense up. He looked to Alfred. He was covered. Came back the other way, but not much. On the pass to Isaac Jones, it was McQuarters who's still out there and still digging in on defense. Where you start to see fatigue on a, on a defense is in that front wall and those guys rushing the passer. They're just not able to get around Billy Dickin that much anymore in this in this ball game. Billy Dickin having a lot more time to stand back there and make the throws downfield. And 
it gets tough rushing the quarterback down after down after down. It takes a lot of energy away. It's, it doesn't take as much energy to pass block as it does to pass rush. Third and ten. One rusher drops back in coverage, and the laid out Winston gets knocked down by Maurice Simpson. Fourth down, the field goal unit comes on. Dickon is the holder, so he will stay on for Shane Ryan's attempt from 37 yards out. Ryan, the sophomore from the Houston area, the Woodlands in Texas, so he returns home tonight. And the Texan kicks a field goal. He's kicked a couple. Joe Tiller's offense putting up points like they did in the regular season. This simple looking device is the key to unlock all the traditions of Purdue. The big drum, the Boilermaker special made the 22 hour drive. Purdue Pete, the Golden Girl is here. The inflatable doll, Rowdy. They're going <laughs> to sing Hail Purdue after the game as long as this 20 point lead holds up. And I wonder if that guy would go to the office looking like that. And it's great to see a, a team that hasn't been to a bowl for a long time enjoy it like the people from Purdue are right now. Archie's line drive deflects off the quarters, goes out of the end zone for a touchback. Oklahoma State's offense missing that key weapon, Alonzo Mays, first team All-America tight end. Dr. Jerry Punch, he separated his shoulder in game seven, but they had no chance of playing tonight, right? Well, he really didn't. He, you know, he had a third-degree AC separation. There are three degrees, first, second, and third. The third being the worst, meaning that the clavicle was elevated greater than one width of the bone. It was elevated so high, even though they probably could have padded it and he would have tried to play, he wouldn't have been able to use his left arm very well. He could possibly have injured it worse. So he made a wise decision. He had it operated on Dr. Jimmy Andrews and in Birmingham had it fixed to get ready for an NFL career. Tony Lindsay is back in the game at quarterback for OSU. His pass form of quarters is incomplete. You know, you got to remember the last play that Alonzo Mays played for Oklahoma State when he was healthy. They were beating Missouri 37-30. to They went on to lose that game. He couldn't play anymore. They lost the next week to Texas A&M. They lost two weeks later to Texas Tech. So, really, when they lost Alonzo Mays, they lost a huge part of their offense and everything they were trying to do offensively. And uh, he, he does have a great pro career ahead of him, and he did make a good decision, but it was a big loss for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Second and 10 from the 20 for Lindsey in the Cowboy offense. Keeping it on the ground, a first down to the 34, Willie Fells knocks down Lindsay. One last point on Mays. He had 29 receptions this year, missing those last four games. Second best reception total on this team was 14. Right. He had twice as many receptions as the next guy, and he missed really a third of the season. And they tried the tight end and really almost had a touchdown on the very first drive of the game, throwing from Garrett Steggs. The pass behind him couple of mistakes on passes intended for tight ends tonight. Lindsay will keep again. Another rushing first down for the freshman across midfield. Mike Hawthorne knocked them down after a 16-yard pickup. And see, this is part of what Oklahoma State can do and what Tony Lindsay can do running the football. But that this style offense is built around the running game so much that it really only is effective if the game is close. But in a game like this, when you're down by 20 points, your running game is pretty much out the window, and now you have to rely on throwing the football and dropping back and throwing the football, and that is really not the strength of Tony Lindsay. He is most effective when he can utilize play action, running the option, and using his legs as well as his arm. You see the flag come down, and OSU will be pushed back five. Dead ball, false start. On the offensive line, first down, five-yard penalty. I think a good move by Bob Simmons to get him back in the game. Try to win this game, of course, try for the miracle comeback, but also, hopefully for him, his last memory of what should be a 
great, great 97 right. first year is a positive one if he can do something on one of these drives. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I think it is a, a good move by Bob Simmons. Get him back in the game. Get him feeling good about himself again. Hope he can make some plays. Maybe get his team for a couple of scores because he really did have an outstanding season as a redshirt freshman. Lindsey is sacked. Chucky Wolfori. The junior out of Lafayette, Indiana. A 16-yard loss. When you know a quarterback is going to throw all the time, it makes it pretty easy to rush the passer. This time, Wakori goes right around Calvin Menifee and makes the big sack. Take a look at the coverage downfield. Zone defense by Purdue. Really nowhere to go with the football. But again, when you one-dimensionalize an offense, you can really tee off as a lineman and go after the quarterback. Second and 26. Short for McQuarters as they tried. In this direction, screen Ike Moore with the coverage. When we're done, Sports Center's on. We'll have reports from the Orange and the Rose Bowl. Another record for Mr. Record, Michael Jordan. And uh, Boilermaker fans, one for two today, it looks like. We'll talk about the basketball upset. Both schools, as we mentioned, with the successful basketball seasons going, but Purdue down to 11 and three after losing their Big Ten opener at home to Michigan State and Oklahoma State stays unbeaten beating old Oklahoma coach Billy Tubbs at TCU a one point win in Fort Worth tonight for Eddie Sutton's Cowboys third and 26 Lindsey tries to run for some of it He's got about 12 there Willie Burroughs pulls him down Let's see if they're going to punt on Fort and long fourth and about 15 and they will kick even though they did come back and score 30 unanswered points to get back in that Missouri game this is still not an offense that is geared towards playing comeback football it, it, it's a it's an offense that's geared to using the running game and playing in close ball games so you can utilize all your weapons this is this is not the kind of game that favors Oklahoma State Oklahoma State's going to take a timeout, maybe to consider if they should be kicking away. Down 20 with 6.24 left in the final game of the season. All right, watch this play because for it instead of punting. Yeah, and they go with the other quarterback, Chris Halupka, back in. Lindsey started this series, but the better passer, Halupka, in the game now. Scrambling, they need a first down over the 40. And they should have it now. They do have the first down to Jamal Fobbs, and a flag after the play. Lee Brush was uh, in some combat down the field with Jeremy off of the OSU center. Let's see who the flag is on. Well, they're going to get the first down, but then they're going to back the ball up because I think it's a, a personal foul on Jeremy Offit. Just trying to get a block downfield, but clearly after the play is done, you don't want to get mad at a guy for hustling and trying to help his receiver out down the field, but you got to be smart when you get there. The play established the first down. After the play, there was a dead ball, personal foul on the offense. The 15-yard penalty, it'll be first down and 10. Here's Ophit right now. Now watch him as he runs downfield, trying to get a block at the end of this play. And when you're, when you're 6'5", 295, you can't hide from anybody, oh. especially when you hit a guy who's only 5'10", 195, like Lee Brush. So not a very smart penalty that time by Jeremy Ophit. How about Lee Brush? Right back up. <laughs> it's kind of, kind of like that uh, rowdy, that inflatable doll that Purdue has. If that thing ever falls down, boom, pops right back up. Play until he drops. That's what they said about him. Pass for Fobbs is incompleted, and another flag is down. This in the Oklahoma State backfield. Oklahoma State. Getting a little bit sloppy as this game gets away and winds down a bit. Holding on the offense. Penalty is 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. One thing about Bob Simmons and, and really both these head coaches, Bob Simmons and Joe Tiller, they really provided great leadership to their teams this year. They had to make some tough decisions when the season started about removing some guys from the team and they were consistent they stayed strong and, and really I think you know that all trickled down you look to those guys at the top and see how they handle things and 
They were both men of conviction this year, and, and then they had that that success at the end of the season to, to point to both to, to all their teammates. Malupka's pass for Greg Brown falls incomplete. Let's remember that this Oklahoma State program six years ago was 0-10 and 1, so it's a huge rebuild. Roosevelt Colvin has really turned it up a notch here in the second half. He has really put a lot of pressure on whether it's Chris Haluka or Tony Lindsay. He has been in the Oklahoma State backfield ever since he came out of the locker room to start this second half. They are just backing up like nobody's business here. There he is again. Just collapses wow. the pocket. David Camacho just, just can't deal with the speed right now of Roosevelt Colvin. They also have a running back, Nathan Simmons, there to help him. But Colvin just showing great explosiveness off the football. Watch him go right around Camacho, and there's Simmons to help. It doesn't matter. He is right to the quarterback in a heartbeat. Ten sacks. One of the top among the Big Ten. <laughs> Happy family with good reason. this year now has one here in the Alamo Bowl and Halutka took another lick this Purdue defense has forced 31 turnovers this year doing it again tonight and again it's Roosevelt Colvin collapse in the pocket forcing Halutka out where he's not as comfortable as he is standing in the pocket to throw and Henry Bill Bell just steps right in front of that pass for the interception. New quarterback for Purdue is Drew Brees. Hands off to Eric Haddad. And the junior out of Ohio gains a few. Well, here is the future yeah. of this Purdue basketball on grass offense. Freshman out of Austin, Texas. And they're very excited about him. They think he has a better arm right now than Billy Dickin and, and really probably had the perfect situation. You have your senior who picked up the offense and had a great year, and you won eight ball games, got to a bowl game. You've got your freshman who got a chance to learn and watch Billy Dickin run the offense, get in and play some in some ball games this year. So it really has worked out as well as Joe Tiller probably could have ever expected in terms of grooming a young quarterback to run this system next year. Brees played in five of the last seven Boilermaker games. He hands to Haddad there. Brees was the league most valuable offensive player. Texas 5A football. It's the highest level of high school football down here in the Lone Star State. His team won the state championship 16-0. When he comes from a throwing program, he threw for 4,528 yards offensively for his career. There you see his numbers last year. Everybody knows the caliber of high school football in Texas and playing at the top of his game down there and again playing in a, in a very quarterback friendly system right now at Purdue. Second effort had at will be close to the first down. So the way it looks the uh, Purdue career of Billy Dickin has come to an end. Well he won't be remembered probably with Everett and Mark Herman and Scott Campbell and Mike Phipps and Bob Greasy and Gary Danielson and Len Dawson and even Jeff George for a year. Unbelievable quarterbacks that have played at Purdue, but he has certainly cut out. What a way to go out for the seniors. And fourth down. And the best thing, he said the best thing that this offense did and this quarterback, Billy Dickin, did this year was spread the football around better than any quarterback that's run this system. And take a look at tonight. Everybody got in on the action. Eight different guys caught in passes. You see Edwin Watson led the way with five catches for 102 yards. So Billy Dickin not only absorbed the offense, but distributed the ball better than anybody maybe that's run this offense of Joe Tiller's system. Trying not to risk a block punt. They go for it on fourth and six, and the pass falls incomplete, intended for Isaac Jones. 
And I think that's part of why this offense is so difficult to stop. You can't just go in and say, well, we're going to take Brian Alford out of the game because he's the only guy they throw to. If you focus too much attention on Brian Alford, then Edwin Watson's going to catch balls, and Isaac Jones is going to catch balls, or Vinny Sutherland's going to catch balls. That part of the difficulty in defending this offense is that they spread you out horizontally and vertically, and they find the best mismatch. Celebration is quite deserved for what Joe Tiller has done this year at Purdue and for these fans overall. We mentioned at the very top of the show, they've played football for 110 years at Purdue. They've only finished in the top 10 at the end of the season five times. So, I mean, this, you talk about a long time between uh, drinks and champagne. Lindsay is the quarterback looking for McWhorters, and the pass is overthrown. Here's Jerry Punch. Is, uh, there's a penalty marker at the line of scrimmage, Doc. Guys, you're talking about the job Joe Tiller has done here after the success he had at Wyoming. The unusual thing about him coming here was that the phone call he got to ask if he was interested in coming to Purdue came from current head coach Jim Coletto. Uh, Coletto asked Tiller, said, hey, are you interested in a Purdue job? And Tiller said, my reaction was, uh, well, should I be? I mean, you're the head coach. And Coletto said, yeah, we uh, obviously he was concerned. He wanted the program to move forward. And when Tiller came to Purdue, he and Coletto sat down jointly and went over the personnel. So Tiller certainly has given a call to Jim Coletto for helping this program as far as the personnel and being able to make what happened this year happen. You know, and just to add to that, Doctor, I mean, Jim Coletto obviously recruited some pretty quality kids that, you know, this senior class was very important to the success of Purdue this year. And Joe Tiller challenged those seniors and says, this team will only be as good as the senior class. And those, those seniors really responded well and, and have given great leadership to Purdue this season. After a roughing the passer penalty, a 16-yard pickup for Jamal Fobbs. First and 10 for Oklahoma State at the Purdue 29. And Willie Burrows, the linebacker for the Boilermakers, was shaken up after that Fobbs carry. And the officials uh, call for time to make sure that the injured player Burroughs comes off the field. Uh, I think we really have to tip our hat to the Purdue defense and Brock Spack, the job that they did tonight too. The offense was impressive with Billy Dickin, but the defense played very well. And uh, that's a defense that has given up a lot of yards, but has created a lot of turnovers, but they did a little bit of everything tonight. They forced turnovers, but they also played very physical with this Oklahoma State football team. Dickin and Adrian Beasley, the free safety, have been named the most valuable players on offense and defense of this game. Sean Love's pass, intended for Love, who goes incomplete. Mike Hawthorne has been around the ball a lot tonight in on the coverage. Sean Love, broken up by Mike Hawthorne. We talked about the Purdue success and how rare a top 10 finish has been for this team. They're still a ways away from that. Not going to happen this year, but in the future, they hope. For Oklahoma State, for as long as they've been playing football, they've only finished in the top 10 twice, 1945 and 1984. So this success that this Oklahoma State team has had means so much for this university. Bob's for a few as Sports Center will come up after our final 105 seconds here in Texas. And when a team goes on probation, as Oklahoma State did a few years ago, it can really be devastating, and it really takes a long time to recover from that. And Oklahoma State certainly has the right guy to get them out of that and get them back where they belong, and that's in, in Bob Simmons, and he has done a great job. Each year he's increased that, that total a little bit, that win total. They've done a little bit better, a little bit better, and then the breakthrough this year with eight wins. So a, a great job turning it around down in Stillwater by Bob Simmons. Nice pass completion to Greg Brown, the tight end. With a minute and 11 left, Oklahoma State still grinding, trying to get points. The Purdue players are planning the splash. Oh, there it is. There's the signal to let's go do it. Stand by. Somebody's got to be the decoy. So is it John Reed or somebody's got to be the decoy to make sure Joe Tiller doesn't know what's coming? R.W. McWhorter still going to hold that Gatorade. 
R.W. McQuarters, who's played so many snaps in this game, he's still on the field with the outcome virtually decided, but scores a touchdown here in the final minute. He just shows you what kind of ability he has in the open field. You get him the football, you let him get out there one-on-one -on -one and make somebody miss. Here the little juke and then the stiff arm, and he's into the end zone, but that's I'll tell you what, we'll see a lot of that next year. And anybody that plays Oklahoma State better be ready to see a lot of number 17 with the football in his hands. Sidness adds the extra point. It's a 13-point game with 55 seconds left. Well, the uh, decoy was doing a good job deflecting Joe Tiller's <laughs> direct interest and uh, what direction he was looking at but they pulled back on the Gatorade for just a moment. Recover the onside kick first after R.W. McCorders on snap 106, or play 106, because you don't consider the special teams kick snaps. 106 of 147 gets the touchdown. He is an impressive athlete, no question about it, and he really didn't get much opportunity to return the ball tonight as a kick returner, primarily because Purdue didn't have to punt very many times. They were so effective moving the football, or they turned it over. But And Arntz did a great job with the kickoffs, That's too. That's right. That's right. Remember, they told us what? Maybe you'll see McQuarters. 15, 15 play. <laughs> A little bit more, and he's doubled yeah. that. 30 snaps on offense. Yeah. The RW, by the way, in case you were wondering at home, is short for Robert William. We just started calling him RW early on. He said, Dad, Mom, not sure who did, but... We said, what, is your dad's name Robert? And he said, yes. He said, but really my dad is known as Dirt. Yeah, he doesn't like Robert. He wants to be known as Dirt. <laughs> but I told him, I said R.W. McCorders. That just sounds like a, a successful trial attorney. You know, R.W. McCorders is in the courtroom. Oh, watch out. I was about to say stranger things have happened, but not one coming to mind right now. Let's see if they can get the onside kick. No, it is recovered by Eric Haddad. And the Purdue offense will get the ball back. You see that onside kick and one of the real big wins for Joe Tiller and Purdue this year came against Michigan State, an improbable comeback. They were 11 points down with two minutes left in the ball game and <laughs> blocked the field goal, returned it for a touchdown, turned around and recovered an onside kick and scored another touchdown to win 22-21, a huge victory over Michigan State. We're now back to the planning of the Gatorade. The offensive lineman holding. Joe Tiller about to get crushed. <laughs> they really bought into his system. I mean, it, uh, they enjoyed playing football this year in West Lafayette. And uh, Joe Tiller is, uh, is the main guy responsible for that. And a lot of affection going into this core right here, too. And you know that looking down with a smile is Larry Corpitz, the offensive yeah. coordinator with Joe Tiller at Wyoming, who came to West Lafayette, was ready to be the offensive coordinator here, suffering from brain cancer, died July 13th, so close to Joe Tiller. Undoubtedly thoughts of him on his mind here tonight as the Purdue Boilermakers wait 13 years to get to a bowl game and come away with a victory. They win the 1997 Builders Square Alamo Bowl by the score of 33 to 20. Sports Center is coming up next with all the stories from today. Thanks to our great Thursday night football crew who worked with us here on the Builders Square Alamo Bowl. For Dr. Jerry Punch and Todd Blackledge, Mike Tirico. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Sports Center is next after this.